And we are integrating the, the, the new sciences with the ancient sciences. And I think that's important. We're not here to say modern science is wrong. We're here to say, well, hey, maybe, you know, these things, we can do something different. Because I too utilize modern science. Mm -hmm. I think it's really amazing, but our ancient nature that, that, again, what you're sharing is really critical and important. So the simplicity of the story is we're eating excessive plants, and not enough animal fat and we're eating too much and too frequently. And some simple things you can do even without changing your what you eat, uh, but just changing uh, the frequency and adding a lot more fat to the diet. So Dr. Kiltz, do you want to kick it off with, with your philosophy around um, the ideal scenario for fertility? Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to share, by the way. I really appreciate it. And uh, for all of us, fertility is critical, whether you're trying to get pregnant personally, a family member, a friend, or just our community. Uh, that's so important for you to gain the knowledge of a health, healthy lifestyle. But um, as a fertility specialist, and I do all the standard medical uh, treatments for those that are suffering from uh, fertility issues, uh, but I, I, I kind of fell upon nutrition about uh, 15, 20 years ago and started off in the paleo world when many of my patients were getting pregnant on paleo diets. Uh, and, and I was kind of talking about meditation and prayer and positivity and that helped. But paleo was like, wow, what is this stuff? And I started reading about paleo and then I tripped over keto. And then I find carnivore. And um, I kind of focused on the understanding that inflammation is the cause of all disease and being infertile, uh, not getting pregnant, miscarrying, um, or or anything else like, like um, uh, a failure to have a vaginal delivery or prematurity or a, a chromosomal or genetic disorders, autism, uh, uh, more, more maternal morbidity, mortality, all these things are related, what I'm finding, to inflammation. And it turns out that our diet is, been, is a deadly diet that is causing all of these problems. And when I kind of found this, I figured, well, what's my job as a doctor? I've got to share these ideas with the world so that they can take control of their own health and wellness. And keto carnivore, to me, is one of the best ways to reduce inflammation, increase your fertility, and and solve really the most important thing in life, which is reproduction, because that's what we're all doing. Everything we do is for reproduction. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, at a biological level, that that's the meaning of life, and I think at, a, at sort of a meaning level, that that provides a lot of meaning in people's lives as well. Having family, having kids, and having grandkids. You know, you talk to a lot of people on their deathbed. You ask them you know, what, you know, any regrets, what you do. And it's always, I wish I spent more time with my family. I wish I spent more time with my kids. I wish I didn't work as much. I wish I spent more time with people. And so in a biological and uh, you know, spiritual sense, you know, that, that is a very good working uh, meaning of life. And so obviously it's very, very important to, to almost all of us, some people, maybe not so much. Well, if you look around the world, um, the incidence of infertility is growing. The mm. family sizes are shrinking. Many, many people are not uh, connecting with the partner. They're not having babies either. They say intentionally, but I think the intention is is uh, misinformed and misguided because I think as women reach their late 30s, 40s, and even 50s and haven't had a child, they look back and see, gee, what happened? Mm -hmm. I think because the propaganda of the world is, oh, you got to wait to have a baby. But mm -hmm. in fact, our reproductive potentials are best in our teens and early 20s. And so the waiting part exposes us to more inflammatory particles, which reduce our fertility, reduce sperm counts, sperm quality, uh, and function, re reduce, again, egg quality, uh, egg function, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, metabolic disorders, endometriosis, uterine fibroids, uh, are all part of that. Uh, but it's male and female sides that are damaged by the, by the postponement of childbearing, and then because of a plant-based diet, tremendous amount of, of sugars damage the reproductive organs directly. 
uh, along with the chemicals. By the way, plants make estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone, which are the birth control pill and the abortion pill, which suppresses male and female reproductive potential also. Uh, and then, then there's the lectins, oxalates, phytates, which embed in our reproductive organs, cause chronic inflammation, again, and damage the sperm, eggs, and, and embryos in the implantation environments this is really the biggest cause. But our plant-based diet, our lifestyle, waiting uh, is, is, is detrimental to our, our reproductive uh, of, uh, function. And, and there's a really great book uh, called uh, Why Beautiful Beautiful People Have More Daughters. It's a social, cultural, sociology book. But essentially, everything we do, blogging, uh, being a doctor, or, or whatever it is, it's in order, it's our feathers. It's our, it's our showing off our colors so that we can a, a, attract a mate, we can reproduce, which is, again, the, the primary reason for all organisms mm -hmm. yeah definitely there was um you know speaking about you know, you know plants sort of disrupting things certainly uh you know with high insulin and and i, I understand that's uh implicated in pcos and blocking conversion of testosterone into estrogen um and there was it was just i just remember a story uh, that i learned in, you know in history class i was taking years ago uh, it was about like the the origin of the heart, the heart shape. I mean, that doesn't look like the organ of the heart. Uh, and what the thought was is that actually was the shape of um, a seed pod that uh, they was using ancient Rome as birth control agent. And, and people would just take this stuff as birth control. And wow. it was so popular that it was just ubiquitous. It was actually on the coinage. And so they found that it's on like the uh, old Roman coins, this sort of heart shaped seed pod. And so, uh, and they actually, they actually like ate the stuff to, uh, extinction. They, they think they don't think that it exists anymore because they just used it all up. And, uh, and that can just goes to show you, you know, the, the, you know, what can happen and disrupt, um, your normal workings. I mean, that that's in the, in the, the best interest of the plant itself. I mean, I understand that there's even some, uh, different like pesticides and, and things that the plants use when, or, or that we spray on them that disrupt insects. A reproductive cycle as well. And then they, they can die or, or disrupt that as well. But, um, I, that sort of brings me to a, a question that I had, uh, which was, you know, there's mixed opinions and thoughts, and I've seen mixed reports in the literature about vegans, vegetarians, people, plant-based sort of eaters and, and, and sperm count, motility count. I found papers that have said both basically. And, you know, obviously it says improved or, or reduced, but usually it's in comparison to what generally in comparison to you know, the average, you know, the average population, which is eating a plant-based, you know, uh, processed food garbage diet. And so maybe a whole food plant-based diet is better than that. But I don't know, in your experience, have you come across that, anything uh, that would elucidate that? Well, you mentioned about the placebo and the uh, nocebo. Mm -hmm. And so anything we do that we ascribe to the thing as the cause of the outcome, you know, is always questionable in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, but you mentioned about the 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 seeds and the plants. I mean, we've been in the in the in the medicinal plant world for thousands of years, and and uh, the the plants are the poisons or they're the pills that heal us, right? It's medicine. Uh, we've been searching for plants as medicine and the, the search of the spice islands and the, the route to the East was about uh, the pharmaceutical mm -hmm. industry, essentially, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the plants that, that will cure us or kill us, uh, essentially. But, you know, we do, I mean, there's so much talk about using herbs uh, and, and essential oils to mm -hmm. heal your fertility, and it is likely that you may be using some anti-inflammatory properties of these plants that may help reduce the inflammation that's causing the damage to the sperm, the egg, the embryo, or the implantation environment. Uh, so I don't know if that's the it's the leading to the question, but mm -hmm. there is, uh, I don't know what you know about Manos. Hmm. Manos, so, Man sure. Manos is a monosaccharide. 
It's another monosaccharide oh, like right, glucose, yeah. galactose, mannose, sucrose. So I mean, they're mono and uh, and 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 disaccharides and 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 uh, polysaccharides. These saccharides damage something in our body that causes damage to the egg, sperm, embryos, and we call it infertility. But polycystic ovarian syndrome, and you alluded to the hyperinsulinemia. But I believe the hyperinsulinemia is not the cause, it's the hyperglycemia, mm. whether it's glucose, galactose, mannose. And there was a recent paper, and I'll share it with you, it was in my talk that I gave at KetoCon, that mm. basically high mannose levels are associated with PCOS. <laughs> so it's sugars. It, you know, it's again, plant sugars are the cause of most of our disease because they damage the glycocalyx and the glycocalyx again is the barcode of every cell of our body every receptor of our body and so you know what causes bad sperm bad eggs bad embryos or bad ovulation which we espouse to polycystic uh, uh, ovarian syndrome is likely still related to a plant glycan a plant sugar mm -hmm. which causes glycation uh, which we call glycation end products. Uh, and, and, and yet the science sometimes tries to give us a story that we're so focused on, we can't see what's going on over here. Hmm. And insulin is only responding to a plant-based diet and a high protein, low fat diet, if you think about it, right? And so I definitely think that, that, all of our reproductive dysfunction, including uh, reduced libido, uh, re reduced uh, uh, orgasms, uh, reduced uh, ability to have an erection, right? Uh, any any uh, dysfunction is all related to the damage the plants are causing us uh, at at some some receptor level in our body. Whether it's mm -hmm. whether it, if you think about it, and I think this is what you're alluding to is the plants contain small amounts of estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone. Mm -hmm. So if I give you a little bit of that, like a birth control pill, an abortion pill, am mm -hmm. I going to suppress your, your, your reproduction? Of course yeah. I am, right? And so then we measure your, your hormone levels and we say, gee, your testosterone is low. You need testosterone. Then we give you testosterone. We, we make you feel better and get an erection. At the same time, we suppress your sperm function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When in fact, if we simply remove the plants, uh, which are the predators, if you've, as you've elucid elucided to for so long, uh, mm -hmm. we will cure our reproductive dysfunction. So I have so many people going carnivore, fatty meat, eliminating mm -hmm. plants, even in their mid to late 40s and getting pregnant. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow. This is quite amazing. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, that was, that was a thing too. Um, as far as, as far as hormone disruptors, obviously there, there are some of these, uh, phytoestrogens, phytotestosterones, progesterones, um, are there, are there other things apart from, you know, the food that we eat that's going to disrupt that, that, that you counsel people to stay away from generally to, for optimal reproductive health? Well, excessive exercise, I think, is mm -hmm. not good for us because it heats up our the core and heat is inflammatory uh, in itself and friction is 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 inflammatory. So I men and women, you know, they're they're cooking their sperm, they're cooking their eggs, uh, which I think is something that I think you got to just slow it down. Yoga, meditation, cold water therapy, some lifting if you want, but minimize it alcohol deadly for our reproductive system. So I, I recommend removing alcohol uh, from your diet and certainly um, smoking, uh, caffeine. Uh, these are all, you know, marijuana, coffee and teas of any significance or frequency are not good for anyone in the reproductive realm. Uh, mm -hmm. There and coffee might have caffeine. You get decaf, but there and I think you've said this many times. There are hundreds of other chemicals in coffee and teas that that we don't even know what they do. Uh, and and that's those are the things. You know, it's water. 
uh, uh, mineral water, spring water, water that sat on the earth, right? And not been processed through filtration and, and remove the natural minerals and vitamins that I think are, are, are critical. Um, and, and, uh, and things like if you fiber, I mean, if you just say people take fiber supplements, I mean, fiber is, is deadly for us because it ferments in the gut and fermentation makes heat, alcohol, aldehydes, and methane gas. And mm -hmm. most fiber sits in the colon, which sits right on top of the ovaries, tubes, and uterus. And so fermentation is an exothermic reaction. It makes heat. So you're, you're heating up your ovaries, your prostate and testicles, which are another cause of, of, of disease, uh, which again, uh, did you get your fiber today? Uh, did you get your fiber supplement? How important it is, which mm -hmm. unfortunately, and again, I suffered for 55 years of bowel bleeding, arthritis, kidney stones, migraines, uh, anxiety, depression, uh, that, that uh, finally at 55, I went carnivore and bingo, all got better. I've never felt better in my life. No more kidney stones, no more bowel bleeding, no more hemorrhoids, no more constipation. And so uh, that's another one, the fiber part of it. Um, let's see. Um, you know, I, again, I always say there are five causes of all disease. Uh, plant sugars, not just glucose, plant sugars, plant chemicals, plant antigens, lectins, oxalates, phytates, gluten, latex, fermentation of plants in the gut via sugars and and then excess of exercise. And so, you know, if you, if you sort of, that, that's the sort of the, 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 the simple concepts, which again, since we're so brainwashed in the medical community that fruit, fiber, vegetable seeds and nuts are so healthy for us. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's, when I talk about it, I'm sure you talk about it to your colleagues, they go like, huh? And, and I had a, a, a 35 year young patient yesterday that has all the bowel symptoms and she's infertile and miscarriages. She's already spent a ton of money on IVF and failed. And when I suggested keto carnivore, and I always throw keto in there, she's like, oh, I can never do that. And, 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 and finally she said, oh, I can never do that. And I asked, well, what would you do? Well, not everything. And then finally she, she did, she said, well, I would do anything to have a baby because that is the truth. We do anything to have a baby because oh, that is like, that's, that's the real trophy of all humanity in life. Yeah. So she, you ended up bringing her around and, and she's going to try. Well, oh. well, well, she, she was, she wants to, she said, I want the drugs. Right. Yeah. So the drugs are intravenous immunoglobulins, um, Humira, uh, they're, they're, they're the, the uh, Plaquenil, Prograph, Neupogen, human growth hormone. These are the drugs and they cost thousands of dollars hmm. and there's no guarantee they're going to work. Hmm. Um, so, you know, she, I, I mentioned it enough and, 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 you know, I, I try not to overwhelm them, but I can be overwhelming sometimes. And, but, but I, I always tell my vegans, my vegetarians, my vet Mediterraneans, I tell everyone, listen, I'm here to help you however you want, wherever you're at. Mm -hmm. As a key, you can do keto as a vegan vegetarian in the Mediterranean, and you can fast do one meal a day. That'll help. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that she'll come around, but I still work in the standard medical field like you, where mm -hmm. we, we dissect and we give drugs and, and have, they have a lot of side effects. Mm -hmm. And, and for her, she's 35 open tubes, regular cycles, a little bit of sperm abnormalities, but nothing significant. Uh, they have a huge chance of conceiving and delivering naturally by going keto carnivore yeah. uh, for sure. Yeah. Well, hopefully she comes around anyway. Yeah, I, I I mean, she has a great, I mean, not everyone does my, does my dietary recommendations and they still get pregnant, mm -hmm. but if we can inspire people to make the changes and it's sharing the story and sharing the story and sharing the story, and then the examples that show up, uh, that really is the thing that I think is the most important that we do.
Dr. Kiltz, when you're recommending carnivore, uh, are you are you saying equal parts protein and fat? Are you saying high protein, high fat? What's what's the mix that you recommend? Well, well, the the focus seems to be on protein, and I think that's wrong. Um, I think we need to focus on fat because fat is the fuel for the human body, not glucose. Um, and fat suppresses inflammation when it's eaten. And so I typically recommend a one-to-one -one fat to protein. You know, that's a hard one, I think, for most people to get. And it's hard for most people to do. And by the way, I got a sample of the carnivore bar, mm -hmm. the, the fat and meat. And we we were flying, uh, Grant and I were flying home on Sunday from it. And we were just, this is all we can eat. We're just yeah. lo loving it. But if you can make, again, pemmican is essentially about a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Uh, does that sound about right? Yeah, it um, is. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's rendered fat. Yeah, by weight. Yeah, so it's like right, rendered calorie. And, 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 right on, right. And also I, I don't use dried calories. Meat, so yeah. What's, yeah. What, I don't and, and, use calories because I don't know what a calorie is. But what are we going to say? Oh, I was just going to say pemmican. So it's dried meat. So you dried all the water. And then once it's dried, then you mix in 50-50 tallow and, and dried ground up beef. So I don't know exactly how that works out with the proportions on on uh, protein to fat um, grams. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I you know, I again it's it's easier to kind of proportion it by what we see. I mean, for thousands of millions of years, you know, no one was putting on a scale or measuring their macros, but I say a one to one is the best. Focus on bacon, eggs, butter, beef, and salt. Uh work to do one meal a day. That's one of the most important things we can do to reduce the 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 sugar flow in the bloodstream, to really get it down low and reduce mm. inflammation. Mm. I'm, I'm also curious about birth control. Do you get a, a lot of people who are coming to you who have maybe just stopped birth control and, and what sort of results, you know, positive or negative have you found? Well, most of my clients have stopped birth control pill one, two, three, or four years ago or longer. Okay. They've used it for 10 or 20 years, which I think is the birth control pill is um is not a healthy uh product in my opinion mm -hmm. uh many women die uh from blood clots and strokes from the pill uh and i believe we use the birth control pill or any birth control as sort of a a signal have as much sex with as many people as you want which is not good for humanity you must be very discerning in your choices in my opinion, we've we've created an environment of an amusement park rather than a temple. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, I think there I think it's I don't I can't say it's directly the birth control pills, the cause or the lifestyle we live because of it. That may be the cause or both. It's likely both in some way, because taking the birth control pill increases a uh, platelet aggregation blood clots and stroke so it's got to be both in my in my opinion so i don't recommend it i don't use it in my in my uh practice i would rather use estrace and other forms of progesterone in order to help some cyclicity for people in order to uh time and uh treatment for either a frozen transfer or something like that but I don't use it in my practice because I don't think it's good for us. Yeah. Um, so I saw, I've seen a couple of your videos or like some of your shorts where you talk about one of the, one of the best or a very good thing to help female fertility is like really increasing the amount of fat, increasing the amount of butter. Uh, you know, like it's like eating more butter. Um, would would that be? Would you give similar tips like for for men and women? Let's say you because obviously, as you say, you know, there's there's a male side of of fertility problems and the female side of fertility problems. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the some of the tips that you give people for the man and the woman to uh, try to conceive naturally? Well, I really give the same to both because mm -hmm. the causes are the same to both. Yeah. We just relate them to different organ systems. You know, I think of it like a car. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the same things cause the brakes to go, the electrical system to go, the, the carburetor to go. It's, it's heat, it's inflammation, it's, it's particles of, of the environment uh, that do it more miles, uh, the less length you're going to live, but um, it's the, the real simplicity of it is high fat, low to no carbs, um, work to, to fast and eat one meal a day to reduce the inflammation. And by eating a stick of butter a day, now some people can't tolerate butter as well because it does have some, some proteins and some sugars that can be antigenic, uh, which cause inflammation. Uh, but, but if you get some really good, uh, uh, good butter, uh, good cream, uh, uh, but I think tallow, lard, uh, and ghee uh, are a little bit better. And ghee is a little bit better because you've hopefully removed the, the sugars and the uh, amino acids uh, as much as you can. Uh, but that's really the, the simplest part to this. I always start with have faith. A belief in the thing you wish as if it is, is the best way to live in life rather than always worrying. Um, and that's kind of where I started off with the 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 law of attraction or the 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 positive positivity and the secret by Rhonda Byrne. Um, and that's how I got into Jack Canfield and and mm -hmm. his stuff, uh, which I've learned uh, is so important. I read the Bible or oh, read bi biblical quotes of positivity. So if you can see what you want as if it is, that helps men and women, functional sperm, functional eggs, and embryo. But all you need to do is see the outcome you wish, which is a baby. Uh, and then carnivore is the very best. But if you're in the keto world, a vegan, vegetarian, and Mediterranean, uh, uh, up the fat. Half, half of your half of your 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 uh, volume or mass should come from fat. The rest of it, protein and carbs or plants, if you're in the vegan world. Now, as a vegetarian, cream, eggs, butter, uh, uh, cream, eggs, butter, and cheese, fatty, then you don't even need to eat the plant at all if you are up to eating the eggs and the butter and the cheese. Uh, and then, And then that one meal a day, and again, we, we reduce the inflammation in the guy, improves his, his uh, vascular flow to his testicles. Mm. Oxygen is, is delivered better. Uh, carbon dioxide is removed along with other uh, of the, uh, of the um, uh, fat oxidative particles from just burning fat are removed. And so, uh, and the glycocalyx, and I know you've talked about it, we've talked about it a little bit, you want to keep the glycocalyx as strong as possible in order to reduce inflammation. Sperm gets better. Their erection gets better. Um, and then the same thing on the, on the female side, reduce inflammation and, and enhance the eggs ovulation and then the environment by going carnivore or ketovore with high fat low amino acids, low proteins. And, you know, I, my sense is, and I don't know how much fasting you've done and, and still maintain your muscle mass that, that our, our need for, for proteins is probably a lot less than we think in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I eat a surprisingly little amount uh, for my size. You know, I tell people like, you know, like, like maybe like two pounds of meat or something like that. Um, when I'm sedentary, when I'm working out a lot more, I'll eat probably twice that. But, you know, I talked to, I talked to some women that are like half my size and they're like, I eat like four or five pounds a day and all these sorts of things. And, um, you know, I think they, they're coming from a, you know, a deficiency point and they're trying to, and their bodies are trying to recover and heal and, and put on more healthy tissue and mass. Whereas my body's pretty happy in its steady state. And it, I just, you know, maintain it pretty well. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, surprisingly little to, to maintain, uh, my muscle mass. I, I wonder, I always wonder how much did we eat 50, 100,000 years ago and how frequently did we eat? Mm. We really don't know that answer mm. very well. And and my bet is, you know, for any of us to just go out and start hunting and finding food, it's not an easy feat. Um, yeah. You know, we have, we, we're, we'd be really hard pressed to do that. 
So mm-hmm. my sense is, you know, I, I, I remember I broke a leg. I went three months in a cast. My, my, my leg came out looking like my arm size wise. Yeah. Uh, and, and because it was sedentary, um, but I wasn't, I wasn't exercising and all my other muscles, you know, stayed, mm. I was in, I was pretty much uh, confined to a, 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 a recliner for like a month. Cause I, I was in so much pain and couldn't move. Mm. Uh, and, and then I figured out, I put a belt around myself and, and the belt ele- elevated the cast full length cast for like three months. Mm. Uh, and, and uh, I moved, but I didn't exercise and my muscles stayed pretty strong. Uh, but my leg was like nothing. Yeah. And so. Yeah. I, I had the same thing when I broke my, my leg. It wasn't, I didn't have a full, full leg cast, but I, I it was not weight bearing for almost five months because I, I just destroyed my deltoid ligament in my ankle and yeah. uh, had to get that, that reconstructed and, uh, and then you know, like unstable fracture of the fibula. Um, and so got it all plated and reconstructed and everything like that. But I was, I was absolutely, my leg was trash. And I remember seeing it, I would take my, my foot. when I got the cast off, I got it out of the boot. It was, again, it was like my arm. And I was like, that's not my leg. That's not yeah. my leg. And I had, I had very big legs at the time, you know, because I was playing a lot of rugby all the time. And I was, I was carnivore at the time. And, you know, my legs were massive. They were like tree trunks, you know, and, yeah. uh, and, you know, and then all of a sudden I've got just one, one tree trunk. And then this one, and, uh, and, you know, and it's just, it's just like alien limb syndrome. I was like, that's not my leg. That's not my leg. Get it the hell away from me. Yeah. And it took a, that took a long time <laughs> to come back. It took me a while also, but again, the, the protein needs, you know, it's it, proteins break down to amino acids, amino acids go to the liver and via insulin that converted mostly to fat. Uh, and, 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 you know, the fat cells contain amino acids, proteins, and sugars. And I wonder, and, and, and if you look at the uh, uh, those animals that, that hibernate and gestate, they lose fat. They don't lose protein. They don't lose yeah. muscle mass. So my bet is the fat cell is actually the most important cell in our body, which contains the fuel for the mitochondria, it contains the building blocks, amino acids, and simple sugars, which are critical for reproduction. Uh, and that's why I think fasting is really important. Uh, Dr. Bright and I had a little bit of a, a, a of, of uh, uh, we, we didn't agree completely on women and fasting. I still think women fasting is critical and important and can heal their, their damaged uh, ovaries, tubes, uterus, and the hypothalamus pituitary uh, uh, axis, which is critical for normal ovulation and pregnancy support. And, and that's the thing, you know, obviously, you know, we do come from a reverse past and more recently than say canines and felines, we have some of these defenses still uh, in the mix. And then obviously the different populations that have, that have been exposed to agriculture you know, further back than, than others, we're gonna have a little more defenses as well. Uh, and that made us, you know, very, very, uh, you know, robust species. We were able to survive during lean times. Whereas a lion, if it can't get meat, it, it's going to die. And whereas we can sort of figure out, we can sort of eat a yam or something like that, and you know, sort of get by long enough to then get a kill. And so, you know, we become very successful in that. But there's a difference between, you know, being able to eat something to survive and what is optimal to thrive. And so I completely agree with you that that would be just, you know, meat in the exclusion of everything else. Well, it's, again, this is so fascinating to me because I'm a little neurotic on talking about this, but I, I, you know, I say what you put in the mind and the mouth and the motion of the miracle machine is critical in life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And fat turns out to be the only fuel for the human body. And that's Mm -hmm. it. And that's why type one diabetics become skinny Mm -hmm. because they simply can't make fat because they don't have insulin and why liver failure patients become uh, 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 become cachectic is because they can't make fat in the liver. Yeah. And, and, and the, the standard diet around the globe is actually a low fat diet. That's it. And, and, and it turns out if you simply up the animal fat you, and eat one meal a day, you'll heal significantly. 
And I take care of a lot of women in early pregnancy where they have a significant nausea and vomiting. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, do not eat. You want to rest. You want to drink water, sips or ice. Uh, many, many mammals actually hibernate. The, and there's actually many great studies on, on, on bears that they hibernate. They neither drink, piss, poop, or eat. They gestate and deliver a club, and they lose no muscle mass and no bone mass. See, everyone thinks I'm going to lose bone mass. I better eat, I mean, muscle mass or bone mass. I've got to eat calcium and protein. It's bullshit. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And, and, and again, I, I, I know that there's so much protein sparing. I'm telling you, it's a low fat diet is deadly, but so is a high carb plant-based variety and spices, in my opinion, are deadly. Uh, mm -hmm. Onions, garlic, spice, tomatoes are all part of the deadly particles because you wouldn't grind up garlic and put it in your eyes. Mm -hmm. The silent diseases happen inside the gut and the rest of the body and when these these spices even pepper like i do salt butter uh cream fat and and in to me it's it's beef and beef liver and bone broth but when you 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 eat a low-fat diet uh you're you're not protecting the glycobiome we give intralipids which is which is not the best it's it's a fat, a, a, a oil, plant-based oil that helps to reduce inflammation. You know, this is why cod liver oil uh, was likely helpful or chicken soup was likely helpful because it, it contained a lot of fat, but, you know, ancient, but now modern chicken soup, you skim off the fat, yeah. which, and you add onions and garlic, which, which is, is deadly. But I know it sounds crazy to tell a pregnant woman with nausea, vomiting to not eat, but number one, they must be fat and they must rest because the baby, the baby is saying, do not put those poisons in my body yeah. because plants contain the poisons to make you infertile and or make you fertilizer because the plants are live organisms that are smarter than you and I. Because ultimately, our brains aren't the smartness. It's our DNA that drives all the function in the body that happens in the background. Yeah. So, you know, again, our, our smartness thinks it's, it's, it's all the science that is the answer. But it really is an ancient, ancient concepts and ideas that are built into our DNA. And so is it built in the plant's DNA. And you know this. There are plants that are carnivores. Yeah. And, and uh, plants like you and I don't want to die yet, but we know we're going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, that, I mean, that, that's, that's very true. I mean, think about all the biochemical processes that go on in our body and are perfectly regulated. Uh, you know, like just, just pH, for, for example. I mean, this is, this is just so exacting. Uh, how our body uh, takes care of these things and you know, our, our, our sodium and potassium and magnesium, all these things is just kept at exacting degrees. And, you know, we don't have any control of that. We don't have any upper, uh, upper control over that. And then we think that we're so smart. We should micromanage these things. You know, people eating, you know, drinking, uh, um, you know, basic water, like, oh, this is what I need to do is I need to keep my, my pH in balance. Me like, buddy, you are not that smart. And if you were smart, you just leave your body to it. Yeah. Uh, Theranos, the company that went bankrupt and, and the issues that with testing, we, we overly test everyone. And there's really no evidence that preventive medicine helps anyone mm. uh, in the sense of standard medicine and testing. So I, mm. I kind mm. of say, listen, you can do a test. You're going to have 50 million different answers by you know every clinician. Uh, and many of the tests are driven and the, the norms are within the standard American unhealthy diet. So, yeah. you know, uh, when my friend got cancer, uh, Dave Kilmer, and then died three to six months later, and we're trying to figure out why, or Sarah Hallberg dies of cancer and she's got a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. It's simply the testing that we recommend to everyone is, is, is strictly a false premise mm -hmm. based on the, the ideas that, 
you know, sugar is the energy and you have to eat lots of plants and fat is the deadly culprit of everything. Yeah. Um, you did mention something that, you know, when, when women are pregnant, they're obviously getting nausea. This is a, is a normal thing. Uh, I have uh, several friends and, and people that I've spoken to that have gone through pregnancy on a carnivore diet and felt next to no morning sickness and did it had a great job. But then there are some that actually had a, a very big aversion to meat. And actually one friend of mine, she was trying to do a carnivore pregnancy, but just the, the smell of meat just, just really put her off. And I, I sort of theorized that it was about, you know, if, if meat doesn't taste good, that means your body doesn't want you to eat it at all. They should just chill out for a bit. Um, and if they sort of waited long enough, then that, that hunger response and would come back. But, you know, I, I never have gotten a chance to test that. Have you run into that? Well, you know, it's our food aversions are, are psychologically fixed in so many ways. So it's hard to separate out the why part of this, because, you yeah. know, from an early age, you've been told, well, you don't eat that, or you're going to have a little bit. And the, the amygdala and the, and the brain is like powerful. And so my sense is, is that however we ate, lived thousands of years ago, and many animals, you know, they're not getting up on a treadmill saying, I got to work out to stay healthy. You know, fat is like a very, very uh, valuable asset on your body. And likely you got pregnant and you're hanging around in your cave. You're staying low and, mm -hmm. and you know, your nausea and vomiting is, says, do not put anything in this body. Mm -hmm. How is the bear doesn't eat, drink, piss or poop. And yet a beautiful baby gestates because Listen, all of our all of our concepts are wrong. Even the amount of water we're supposed to eat is wrong. Mm -hmm. And so if you hibernate, my bet is we probably had a hibernating existence in some way that, you know, in the winter, you know, how much energy, I mean, everyone tries to lose weight. And how easy is it? It's yeah. not. Well, why not? because it's not meant to be easy to lose weight. You know, we spend all this money on three meals a day and then all this money in trying to lose weight, but we don't. It's saying, guys, like if you have nausea and vomiting pregnancy, it says don't eat. I mean, was a cracker around yeah. 10 to 100,000 years ago? Yeah. And remember, Salisbury basically told us they were feed. I mean, even if you look at all the, the armies of the world, they were eating biscuits mm. for, for hundreds, if not thousands of years and bread, bread and water was it. But the Portuguese, mm. right? And if you look at the books by Kurlansky on cod and of salt, I mean, without cod and salt, you, and even the, the, the Mongols, like these armies, they were fueled with the food we we're meant to eat yeah. But but um, nausea, vomit, and pregnancy is a protective mechanism, and hibernation is the very best thing. I tell people don't exercise. Hmm. My my theory is in general, the five causes of all disease: sugar, not just glucose, by the way, all sugars, uh, phytochemicals, the plant antigens, lectins, oxalates, phytates, and more, fermentation of fiber in your gut, all gut. And then the fifth one is exercise. Exercise in general is harmful and deadly. Again, it's it look at we all like to look like gladiators and show off, and it's all reproductively defined. And I get up and I move, I do things, right? Mm -hmm. But when my knee hurts, what do I do with that? I rest. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that we're con convincing everyone. Somehow the, the food industry made a deal with the government. We're going to create a healthy lifestyle and we're going to fund the healthy lifestyle. So you don't come after my sugary drinks. Right. Right. And so remember the food industry, we, you know, again, I love food and this is not a blame, but all the marketers are, are convincing us that your problem is you're too sedentary and you're slothful. Right. Yeah. But yet we've shown that excess, more exercise is just about making us fatter and fatter and fatter. But remember, being fat is not the problem. It's the food that got you fat. 
Yeah. That's the problem. And keeps you unhealthy because even if you're 300 pounds, if you go carnivore in two to four weeks, you will feel like a billion dollars. Yeah. And if a famine hits, guess what? You survive because that's what we're meant to do. So I know it's counter. I mean, look, I used to be a maniac triathlete, but I, my back, like even back aches and back neurologic problems are due to inflammation in the bowels. Remember, the, if you look at the anatomy, the nervous system is intraperitoneal and then it goes out and the, the, the discs are highly inflamed by the GI tract that is highly inflamed. What's the temperature of a digesting bowels compared to a, a week of empty bowels? Mm. Different, isn't it? Mm. And so these ideas are, are, are a little radical. And by simply going keto carnivore one meal a day, and again, I, I like the keto is still a, a word, but what does keto mean? Keto means high fat, low to no carbs. Yeah. That's what it means, right? That's what we, we've labeled it. It's made up, by the way. Mm -hmm. And acetyl, acetyl, acetyl-CoA, acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone are all in equilibrium. This idea that as, as, uh, 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 ketones are the fuel is incorrect. Acetyl-CoA is. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, I think it was Thomas Seyfried that coined the keto glucose uh, um, ratio, right? Ketones to glucose. Now, I don't recommend, I don't measure anything personally. Yeah. If you feel great, you know you're doing the right thing in general, but not always. Mm -hmm. But basically keep a ketogenic diet means your glucose levels are low. But remember, if you eat three to six plant-based diets and protein diets a day, you're always keeping your glucose and likely other glycans. Remember, uh, fructose, sucrose, glucose, uh, galactose uh, are all uh, uh, lactose are all glycans essentially. Mono, uh, di, and polysaccharides, which are in our bloodstream higher than ever, that causes glycation. For some reason. Some people are more susceptible to glycation than others. Maybe those at higher cholesterol levels have a protection, but, but, uh, but maybe there's some people, again, you know, as an Italian Mediterranean, my family's family's family tended to live longer, higher cholesterol. Um, and, and uh, you know, we all know the Ansel Keys story was all, made up yeah. because scientists are no different than anyone else you know fame and fortune is what we're all seeking rather than um fertility and health for all of us yeah. um, so um i hope i'm not going too much on <laughs> you know here and there but 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 it the occam's razor says the simple answer is the one yeah fat is the only fuel for your body and mitochondria never sugar you do convert amino acids and sugars to fat in the liver, but ultimately low fat is deadly for you. Whether you don't carry it when there's a famine or you don't eat it on a routine basis, it's yeah. going to kill you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you were saying about, uh, you know, exercise and, and, um, uh, that the reason that people are fat or they're overweight or they're having problems is because they don't exercise enough, right. but, you know, that doesn't, uh, you know, people always say, and I remember looking at, you know, animals in the wild, they're just like ripped. You know, I was wondering, I was like, you know, why, why are those so ripped? Why are we just, you know, the only squishy animal on earth? How do we become so, so dominant? And people just said, oh, exercise are always running around. But, you know, that doesn't explain animals in the zoo. You know, I've never seen a fat lion or a fat giraffe and certainly haven't seen a fat zebra and they live in cages in their entire life. There's a definition of a sedentary lifestyle, but they're eating what they're supposed to eat. And so they look like, you know, they're ripped. They look like they're on steroids and, you know, and they look fairly similar to a, a zebra in the wild. It's not that much different. You know, for 10 years, I have not exercised yeah. about uh, eight months ago ish time goes away. It zips by. I, I had gained 20 over COVID and I'm like, 
you know, okay. I got on my bike. Uh, I, I do, I bike down in Florida. I stay off the roads up in upstate New York. I do, I do some resistance stuff, which I, you know, I think, um, and, and I got down my 15, 20, and I'm back to where I've been for 15, 15, 10 years and more. And, and literally I do a little bit. I think that stretching and light, again, resistance stuff. I do pottery. Uh, you know, the more we do yoga, tai chi and things like that, or we work in the yard, yeah. we build yeah. things, we make things, we're creative. I mean, animals, you know, they're, they're making a nest or, or they're, they're hunting for food. I mean, when was the last time you went hunting for food? And you may, and there are a number of people that I, I know, uh, uh, Keto Savage and, and a lot of others are hunters. Yeah. And uh, I'm not a hunter. You know, I either, I either, you know, nowadays it's just, you, you order it all online. I mean, I get Snake <laughs> River Farm uh, ribeyes uh, uh, delivered, uh, frozen. Uh, you know, it's liver from from uh, Hudson Farms, a like duck liver, butter, uh, cream, and eggs. I mean, that's my my mm -hmm. my nutrition. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, too many people are getting knee replacements, hip replacements. And interesting, there was a story I can't remember where it was of a orthopedic surgeon. I think up in Alaska or something that got a hip replacement, mm -hmm. and he had a he had a psychiatric breakdown. Mm -hmm. They found out it was toxicity from the hip replacement. Yeah. So, so if a Georgia Ead, I don't know if you've interviewed her yet, but she's rocking. I've learned a lot from Georgia uh, Ead that that plant based diet contains the poisons and basically anxiety, depression, hmm. uh, all these diseases that we're we're medicating for even psychological get better on a carnivore uh, one meal a day plan. Uh, yeah. And again, high fat is where it's at because it's what your body requires. You know, I sell some supplement lines. Uh, we do a, a liver and a, and a, uh, a beef organ supplement through Kiltz's Nutritional Solutions, but you don't need those things. Mm. You know, I say if, if you can, you know, really, we're supposed to eat real food, drink water. You know, maybe from time to time you have a sip of alcohol, you know, in a celebration. You know, I mean, I once in a while I have, you know, my friends like to smoke cigars and I sit there and, you know, you do this, but, but it's, it's rare yeah. and, and really it's, it's minimal. If you, if you're addicted to these things and you know, you shouldn't touch it, do not, you know, I, I, my, I do coffee with occasional butter uh, is coffee from a plant. Damn right. It is. It does it want to control us. Damn right. It does. <laughs> and uh you know, not to say, oh, this is good for us. Mm. Uh, you know, I, I think, interesting enough, when you add the fat to your carbs or your protein, uh, you, you coat and protect the glycobiome, mm. which minimizes the, 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 the proliferation of the microbiome, which, again, the, you know, bowel pain, ulcers, GERD, uh, is all breakdown of the, of the glycobiome. And if we could minimize that, that would, that would be better. And yeah. um, so, you know, I would say, if you're going to exercise, do it light and easy and, and uh, you know, a little bit, you know, a little bit of resistance. And I often, I don't put anything added on this stuff because, you know, as I get older, I notice that if I try to do too much, uh, it, it does, it, it, it hurts me. Mm. And, and I want to, I want to protect, you know, the miracle machine, you know, you can choose to kind of look like, sh sh you know, you're younger, Sean Baker. I mean, again, this is what I'm trying to help for so many people that don't look like us. How do we inspire them to be happy with where they're at? Uh, Zach Bitter always says, you know, start with where you're at. Mm. And, and by being happy with the beautiful body, even if it's 300 or 400 or 500 pounds, be happy with that miracle machine. That's the mindset. As you begin to understand that, you know, if there's a famine, you're, you're in rock and amazing shape. But by going carnivore keto one meal a day, I mean, you're like, I eat so much less that I buy, they're $140 for a steak, right? Mm. But it lasts me five days. Oh, wow. And I only eat one meal a day. Now, yeah. again, I'm post-reproductive years. 
Although, you know, it's 66, plenty of people having babies, but you need a lot less calories. I mean, I don't even, you know, if someone says, well, how many calories do I need? I have no idea. But if you're gaining weight, you're either eating too much food or you're not exercising enough. But now why would you spend money on food and try to exercise more when you could just simply eat less yeah. food? That's why this one meal a day at night before you go to bed, because when you rest, that's when you want the blood flow to the bowels. When you exercise, where's the blood going? Yeah. Periphery. Is that good for our digestion? No way. And, and I, I personally recommend napping. Uh, I do one, to, if I could get three in, like, I think, I think at any age, napping is really, you know, as kindergartners, you know, it's like, or preschoolers, it's time for a nap. Mm -hmm. But what do we now do? It's time for a snack and lunch and a snack. If you simply did meditation and prayer and went for a light walk and eliminated those meals, even if you, okay, I'm going to eat a little something for breakfast, but you know, it's, I say one meal, maybe a snack, which I sometimes will do a little, a little salami and Parmesan or my leftover ribeye, which is always black and blue, always yeah. black and blue. Nice. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, you look at different cultures, they would, they actually follow that exact model, like the siesta in, uh, in Mediterranean countries. Yes. You, know, you, you take a break, you take a nap, you know, you have a, uh, you have a bit of a nap, you, you park under a tree and you just pass out for an hour or two and then get back to work. You know, uh, I wish yeah. I could nap. <laughs> I really well, well nap. we, we can't see, are you, are you in residency? I can't, what are you in residency? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I left my original program for a family emergency. So I took a few years off and I was doing humanitarian work in uh, Bangladesh. And so, yeah, I'm just back into it again. So it's all the on calls and misery of all that. And what's your current residency in? Neurosurgery. And, and, and uh, which is amazing, amazing uh, uh, specialty. And I'm sure you're, you know, so you're in this, like me, I'm in traditional, I'm a, I'm a surgeon, uh, reproductive endocrinologist, uh, and, I, and I still operate a lot, but at this, and I know, but I still talk about all this stuff, you yeah. know, so that once we've done the surgical correction, uh, they're able to heal. Uh, and then maybe help prevent these things. But even, you know, I can now, I will, I will sometimes put my headset on. I will, I listen to uh, 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 either some music or, or a small book story of positivity. I, I go through my prayer list, gratitude list. And I might just sit back in a chair and close my eyes and I say, okay, give me five minutes. And it, re see, um, and I, I can't remember who it was, and I apologize. Some of these really great, amazing uh, uh, keto carnivore experts talking on this. See, our ATP. Uh, have you ever measured ATP in the blood? Nope. nope. Have you ever measured glycogen? Uh, no. No. Have you ever, like, where is glycogen? Do you know? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so so, so my, my thought is, is that by resting, we likely rebuild some of our ATP stores. Hmm. Glycogen is a it, glycogen storage is a glycoprotein, which is critical for re uh, 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 adding back to the glycobiome. That it's critical to have those glycans ready for glycosylation. Hmm. So, so GR rest actually rejuvenates our ATP stores and also rejuvenates our glycogen stores. But remember, glycogen and glucose is made in the human body. Mm. Yeah. Right. So when I learned, I think it was David Feynman, I don't know how many years ago, over 10 years ago, and I read, and it was, it was like, um, um, or Richard Feynman, actually, that, mm. that um, carbohydrates are not required in the human diet. Yeah. I'm like, well, wait a minute. That's not, that's not what they teach us, right? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, nucleo, nucleic acids, fatty acids, amino acids, and glycans are actually the building blocks for the human body. Mm -hmm. And the fuel for the mitochondria is ATP from fat. 
Mm -hmm. Glucose in the cytoplasm of the liver makes pyruvate. But remember that also makes lactate. And this is why cancer cells exist. So Otto Warburg, 100 years ago with Hans Krebs, uh, sort of created this pathway. And remember, if you believe the science is true here, you're always led down the path here. Mm. But guess what? If the science was incorrect here, yeah. then the answer is actually over here. But we're so far off the path. Remember, glucose is the primary energy of the cell. And once you've used up your glucose, who do you know that has zero glucose in the bloodstream? No, that one. Yeah. No one. No one. So who do you know has no fat in their bloodstream? Nobody. Again, that, that there are acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetone, uh, uh, or, and uh, uh, acetoacetate are the, are the main culprits in this. But if you draw blood in a standard eater, are you going to find zero ketones? Shouldn't. There, no, no, there's not zero. They're always there. Yeah. There's yeah. always ketones. So, so if you always have ketones, yeah. why would it use glucose for energy? If our theory is ketones are the energy, right? Mm. The rate limiting factor is actually oxygen. Okay. So, you know, when we get, when we run and run and run and use our burst of ATP, right? You need, you need enough oxygen. So the, the capillaries, you know, we're, we're trying to use all these muscles and trying to gain the, the, the oxygen to deliver in order to, you know, take the, the, the electron uh, over to water and, 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 and make CO2. Um, and so, you know, as you build your stamina, you can build your, your ATP and your oxygen carrying capacity. Uh, I was watching Peter uh, Atia with with um, with a Lance, a Lance uh, uh, Armstrong, right? And he was my hero. Uh, and you know they're doping ultimately by adding red blood cells to add to the care oxygen carrying capacity, which allowed you to do more. Right? Had nothing yeah. to do with sugar, by the way. Yeah, it true. only had to do with oxygen. Yeah. If you can deliver more oxygen to the mitochondria, guess what? You can do anything. So we always forget, remember glycation. My sister was blind. Uh, her kidneys didn't function and she went heart failure at 52. Hmm. Uh, almost lost a limb. Why? Microvascular capillary damage. Remember, 98% of your vessels are capillaries. Mm -hmm. And they're damaged because what's the normal human glucose 100,000 years ago compared to today? Do you know? Well, like we don't. Yeah, no. Well, well, because if you don't, if you, if, and, and this is where uh, Stephenson, uh, you know, back uh, 120 years ago uh, in, in his work uh, where he was hospitalized for two years and ate only meat. And, you know, look at, we already know the story. You don't need another prospective randomized study. It's already there, right? You can live on only, you know, meat, uh, but you got to eat the blubber, by the way. Mm -hmm. But the simple answer is that we were taught that sugar becomes our fuel, right? We were taught that amino acids, not so much, right? And that fat, right? And so... But we forget that an Otto Bergberg basically proved that glucose was the cause of cancer. Mm -hmm. Glucose through glycation damages your mitochondria. If a cell no longer has enough functional mitochondria to survive, it either dies or if it's able to utilize enough ATP made in the cytoplasm via pyruvate to lactate, then it becomes a cancer cell. Now, why do cancer cells metastasize? Because they're in the wrong environment. Like all us humans, when you feel like you're in the wrong environment, what do you want to do? You want to move. So this, the cancer cell 
is ultimately every cell of your body contains all the knowledge of the universe. It's going to say, what are you guys doing to me? I'm going to get out of here. It wants to thrive and survive and proliferate. But the problem is the dietary environment that we have given it is deadly for many of us. Now, why, why do only 10% of people who smoke cigarettes get lung cancer? Mm. I don't know. Why did Sarah Hallberg get lung cancer and she was a non-smoker? My theory is, is because we're still eating a high plant-based diet, even if it's keto. Mm. Keto, unfortunately, yeah. is a phrase that could be confusing. And, and uh, uh, fasting, I call it intermittently feasting. When you intermittently fast, it means you intermittently don't eat. Well, you want to fast for 23 and feast for one. That is the very best one. Now, if you can go two, three, four, or five, and you're going to build your autophagy. And I mean, these are, these are great scientific concepts, but I think they're confusing for most simple people like me. The simple answer is your body only burns fat and you need only one meal a day or less, never more than that. But if you're getting too skinny on that one meal, add fat because fat is twice the calories and no one's going to say, can I have that salad instead of that porterhouse ribeye fatty steak if you really need the right fuel for a human Ferrari? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was going to ask you, you mentioned, obviously, you, you're still doing surgeries as well. And you mentioned endometriosis. Um, I've had I've had a number of people ask me if, you know, a carnivore diet can can help with this. I, I just don't know the answer. Is that something that you uh, had had success with in from a dietary perspective? Or is it still just the traditional methods of, of treating that? Well, we all still do our traditional methods of surgery mm -hmm. of Lupron or Lissa, Letrozole. But but the the here's the simplest if the bowels are damaged then lectins oxalates phytates and all inflammatory microbes plus the chemicals get into your body the colon and the and the small intestine they 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 cover over the uterus pelvis of uh, the ovaries mm -hmm. and the peritoneal cavity and so when you damage the the glycobiome you absolutely cause endometriosis. Mm. You cause pelvic scar tissue. You cause damage or loss of tubes. You cause adenomyosis, endometriosis, fibrosis. You cause dysfunctional labor and, and, and early pregnancy loss and later losses and fetal demises. Wow. So endometriosis is just another disease in the whole bucket of diseases caused by the predatory plants. So I've seen so many car carnivores like uh, Dr. Kiltz, I have no more pain on my menstrual cycles. I'm not bleeding and my endometriosis goes away. So, you know, if you think about it, like chemotherapy, we give chemotherapy to kill your cancer cells. Now, where does most chemotherapy come from? Plants. Plants. Yeah. Okay, so the plants, we give a drug to kill you, but just before you're dead, we take it away and we pray that your body's able to heal, okay? Yeah. So what if we stopped feeding the fuel for the cancer, which is glucose, antigens, phytochemicals, and fermentation? And remember, what's one of the best ways to damage DNA? Is to heat it up. Hmm. See, fermentation in the colon and the small intestine is simply an exothermic reaction. Hmm. It makes beer and it makes heat. Why do some people get damaged and diseases and other people don't? I don't know. But everyone gets something because smokers, if you don't get cancer, you're going to get heart disease, strokes, or something that's going to damage you. And, and so ultimately, all the things neurologists, neurosurgeons deal with, fertility, gynecologists, uh, primary cares, all of us deal with gastroenterologists. Remember, uh, you know, it's, it's this story. I, I was talking to an oncologist who's suffering from infertility at age 32, right? And she's an oncologist, but where the struggle is emotionally, 
we've learned all these things and our patients are re re rely on us for the knowledge that the that the, the the healthcare system has given us but now i'm failing and now i'm going to tell them to eat steak and heal i mean you know my medical school here in syracuse told me zip it mm. you talk about this and I was reported to the Office of Professional Misconduct in oh. New York for discussing keto carnivore, right? Uh, you know, my job, and like I believe all doctors' jobs in life, we're, we're, we're consultants and counselors and we're coaches and cheerleaders, we're working together. And, and our job is to discuss options. Your job is to decide what you want to do, and we will do our very best to carry that out. Yeah. So. You know, it's, it's kind of, mad. but so all the common reproductive problems are due to, you know, cherry, uh, uh, oats, uh, seeds, nuts, vegetables, fruit, fiber, and all things made from plants. Perfect. Yeah. So like that's, um, you know, when I was looking into, you know, PMS, PMDD, PCOS, things like that, I, I just found just endless, endless connections to, uh, you know, diet, nutrition, and these sorts of things. And, and, um, and certainly with P PCOS, that, that seemed to just go away. PMDD, I didn't see as much uh, information, but I, I did find some things that really suggested that, that that's exactly what was going on. You know, I mean, there are very, I mean, when I, when I see patients with the double cystic fibrosis uh, 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 DNA mm -hmm. genetic modification, mutation, mm -hmm. and they don't have cystic fibrosis, yeah. And then when I was, I was talking to a, a Huntington's, but she's been diagnosed with Huntington's disease. Now she has the double markers, but she has no symptoms. Okay. So now I've already told you, you've got the disease and you're going to, you're going to die of it. Right yeah. now that's already a negative that we told people, but you know, when you hear about sickle cell and, and, and all the genetic varieties we have likely were developed in some environmental uh, uh, area milieu that was beneficial to have this DNA, right? right. And so um, she told me that you know it's it's a fifty to seventy five percent chance that I'm going to get that I'm going to get Huntington's or die of it. I said, well, you know, my sister died of diabetes and my best friend died of cancer, and you know, my bet is now we're doing you know like unique individual personalized medicine. We're going to look at all your DNA and then we're going to tell you, you know, you're going to get this, 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 and this, and you better get your babies now and take out your ovaries or your breasts. And, but that's built on a standard dietary regimen. Yeah. Not understanding that heat is the best way to denote your DNA. And so are the chemicals that we use. And remember chemotherapy and radiation therapy, both have secondary cancers that they cause. So, you know, these ideas are really radical. And, and um, uh, Thomas Seifried wrote a book that cancer is a metabolic disorder and taught me about Otto Warburg. Yeah. And uh, the basically you could attach glucose to a radioactive nucleotide, inject it, and it goes to cancer. Well, why does it go to cancer? Because cancer cells have dysfunctional mitochondria. And they utilize glucose in their cytoplasm to make ATP. No other cell in your body does that. Uh, why? Because, uh, again, it's, it's damaged, damaged mitochondria due to hyperglycemia uh, or high, uh, elevated glycans that you and I are born with. Remember, you're born with it. You, you are bathed in a, in a high sugar environment in your mother's womb. And you're eating, now everyone's eating, eating a formula. Even my daughter, I hate to say, I fed her a formula, uh, which is all made of plants. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she, well, she argues with me, but she's smart as shit and she's supposed to. Uh, but, but it really is an amazing concept. Now we have a shortage of baby formulas. Well, what happened to the breast? And the reason the breasts aren't working today, do you know why? Hmm. because the micro, the glycobiome is damaged by glycosylation, glycation. And so the cells of the mammary glands 
can't make milk because we're bathing ourselves, we're marinating our bodies in glucose. Yeah. Your glucose should be 40 to 60 all day long. It should not be. Now, the reason I, I, I'm going to use the word, I eat sugar, a cane, I love it with my ice cream, uh, is because a simple sugar is far better than a complex sugar. Yeah. Now, why? Because you eat a simple sugar, it goes quickly into your hepatic portal system, it quickly goes to your liver, insulin quickly chimes in and converts you to fat. Your glucose level lowers, your insulin level lowers. Remember, if you're a faster, so remember insulin resistance. If I am always have complex carbs in my bowels, always remember, it takes three days for most complex carbs to go from your mouth to in your toilet, mm. right? Maybe, right? And if I'm eating three carb carbohydrate meals a day, the bucket mm. always has, guess what, digesting in it? Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. So sugar into the bloodstream, what's your insulin going to do? Is that insulin resistance? Hmm. Nope. It's, it's, it's false. Insulin resistance is false. The deadliest, deadliest thing is an insulin pump. I'm going to pump you full of insulin. If you're always on a pump of insulin, what's, what must you always eat? Carbohydrates. That's right. Yeah. And remember, lettuce, kale, vegetables, fruit, fiber, avocados, and seeds and nuts are carbs. Hmm. I'm sorry, an avocado is not a fat. It's a fruit. Last I looked, it's a sugar and it has fiber. Fiber Fs us up <laughs> and it's deadly. Deadly. I see all these, you know, these, oh, you need your fiber. Like if you want cancer, please chime in. It's like steel wool and sandpaper to damage the, the glycobiome. Glycobiome, glycocalyx is the Teflon shield that is the only thing we are damaging that causes all disease. That's that's really, really the concept and idea here. Nice. Yeah. Um, so you were saying you, you said you're really just eating just the meat and the butter and some cream and you have some coffee. Is that is that just so you're, you're fairly strict, I would say. And you say, and then sometimes you have a, a bit of a treat or something like that. Okay. So treats and rewards are natural to human beings. Don't ever use the word, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, what, what am I thinking? The opposite of treat and, and reward is punishment, right? Yeah. And, and because you never want to punish this human being. And, and so, you know, again, it's, I have, I have water and coffee. I sometimes add the butter. I like a month ago, I was off coffee for six weeks, uh, for a week, last year, six months. I come and go. I love it. But, you know, it, and, and Raymond from Steak and Butter uh, uh, Gal Coaching is, you know, he called me on it that I am addicted, right? <laughs> but we're all addicted to something. So, but, but yeah, uh, ribeye steak every day, but it's, I, I never measure it, but literally I might cook this much, but I only eat that much. And I'm like, okay, yeah. tonight, I literally take it, I cut it up in pieces and I'll eat it. I, I, I cook it in a pan under the broiler. I, I make it black and blue. I add mold and salt and butter, sometimes some blue cheese. I, I, I pour the fat right back over it. Because mm -hmm. you see the problem of barbecuing, you lose all the fat. Yeah. That's bad. And so that's my meal at like five or six o'clock, sometimes four. You know, I, 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 I get up at like 3.30 to four o'clock or somewhere in there every day. I go to bed at eight or nine, uh, you know, early to bed, early to rise. I, you know, I, I watch and interact with all of this, this content in this health and wellness space regarding keto carnivore. Um, um, and and uh, I read or listen to books a lot um, and I go to bed early. Yeah. Um, and I, I do a little bit of, you know, I, I'm, I'm as vain as anyone else. And, and you know, in, in some way, uh, I know that, um, uh, you know, I carry a little fat, but I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not trying to lose it, recognizing that 
you know, if I get sick and I need to fast for a week and I don't have any, you know, it's not, it's not good for us. Mm. Uh, but yeah, then I make an ice cream. Oop. All right. I lost you. Sorry about that. Right. Uh, I, 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 um, I, uh, let's see. Oh, there, where is, I don't eat, uh, I eat ice cream that I make. It's cream, an egg, a pinch of salt. Uh, I do a little vanilla bean and I add a teaspoon or two of cane sugar. Now, again, it's my treat from time to time, not every day, once a week. Uh, the other day, I literally made my ice cream with no sugar. Mm -hmm. And it's still awesome and great to eat. And so reminding all of us, right? Uh, you know, you go to a party and you go hang out with friends and family. You know, some people are on, they can't touch that. Well, if you have strength and power over, you know, all of this, uh, you know, you'll get whatever your habit is, you'll learn. But, you know, I'm pretty strict. I rarely will eat chicken, uh, some, uh, some salami and cheese, but that's my night. I never eat salad. Uh, uh, kale, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. I, I'm a, I love garlic and onions and salsa. It's deadly for us of any frequency or any amount. Yeah, yeah. And then you um, you talk about uh, your Facebook community as well. You know, talking about obviously you having this support structure and having this sort of sense of community. Um, can you tell us a bit more about that as well? Well, you know, I mean. I do this because I, 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 my mother was loved to talk to people. My father just liked to hang out at home and I got my mom's genes, but I, as a physician, what I realized is that we can help so many more people by sharing our, our ideas and content, but it's because we do it. You know, our standard doctors were doing this, you know, don't smoke and you know, you gotta be skinny and all this stuff. And they, they're not the models, right? And so uh, I, the community in the village is critical. You know, we have Facebook groups. I mean, uh, many of them are just uh, uh, just um, de novo created, uh, but there are a lot more groups developing mm -hmm. uh, for support, counseling, coaching, but um, you know, between Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and whatever they are, but uh, I, I, and I'm on, I, I joined uh, 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 a Bella's Steak and Butter gang where I'm just a regular uh, participant, but I like, you know, we all participate as coaches and, and things like that, but it's, we have to, the problem with medicine, it's sort of like it's, it's a, a you know, that's up here, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're, you're probably in your 20s or 30s? I'm 42, man. Okay. All right. 42. <laughs> So, so interesting enough at 41, I lost a job, fired, had no money. Hmm. And I was like, okay, I can't do this standard shit anymore. So I started seeing my fertility and hmm. I integrated all this, but, you know, but, but now with, with all this modality and social media, uh, medicine is a new world. And, and really the, the, you know, you don't have to sell or write a book. You simply create a, a ideas and, People will stick around when you're honest, when you care. Uh, and, you know, I don't monetize. I mean, I sell some of these things on Amazon. We sell some nutritional solutions. But my intent is not like, how can I monetize it? Yeah. It's really, wow, if, if I can help people that I never see. Mm -hmm. And it, I see on my blogs, hey, Dr. Kiltz, never, never met you, but I did this and I had a baby and, you know, that were my IBS or arthritis all but gone. So, you know, it's, is the more people like you, especially starting off in medicine, uh, it, it's a game changer. Uh, my mom at, at my mom and dad lived in 93. Uh, her mother, my, my father's mother did 103. Nice. My mother fell. She loved to climb and do things. And like at about 85, she was in the garage and she fell and got a, got a intracranial hemorrhage. Right? Mm. Best thing that ever happened to her. Oh. And, 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 and I say that in a way, because we have to always imagine that whatever happens is part of the, 
the gift of the gods in, in our, our life. But, you know, she didn't need neurosurgery, but, you know, they were going to do it. But the people that took care of her were amazing. And my mother, through the journey, uh, got better. She gained her strength. But over time, her body whittled. And at 90, 93, she said, adios. My dad, a year later, said adios. And, and but um, uh, the, the connections that we have to do, anything you fight will fight back. Mm -hmm. Anything you foster with faith and creativity and sharing in a way that just adds to more people on this journey. And again, even in the standard medical profession, I was invited to give a debate uh, as a fertility doctor. I train non REIs to do fertility. Uh, and it's like, well, how can you do that? So I, I said, I won't do it. But then I said, you know what? Listen, if you want me to come and discuss how we can all help inspire and, and help more people that are suffering from infertility naturally or uh, train more people. Because nowadays, you know, uh, it's not just doctors, MDs, DOs, it's RNs, NPs, uh, PAs. And, and, you know, all you have to do is be a live human being with a pulse and you could start, uh, you know, coaching people, mm -hmm. which is, again, uh, how, you know, between I, Maria Emmerich, by the way, is some, someone I learned about keto also. And, and uh, again, it's through social media that is the, the new way of health and wellness. And when you need a surgeon, thankfully, there are some well-qualified and trained people that can do these things. Yeah, true. And uh, yeah, that's, I, I think that would be great to get medicine back to what it was, you know, for thousands of years, just dealing with you know, pregnancy and childbirth and, uh, you know, congenital disorders, traumas, and, and, you know, infectious disease, and then in poisonings. And I, I think it'd be great to get back to that and, and make a lot of doctors, uh, you know, have a lot more time on their hands. And, uh, you know, I think that'd be bad. I do pottery. I do pottery and painting. So it gives me more time nice. to be in the studio. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, great. Well, Dr. Kills, thank you so much uh, for coming on. I had an absolutely great time talking to you. I learned quite a lot from that. Um, how uh, best to get a, con a hold of you and see your content and, and uh, uh, yeah, just see your stuff. DrKilts.com and CNYfertility.com and are our best places. You can go to YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, hey, you, Dr. Kilts. Uh, and there's books on Amazon. Uh, you can download a lot of these books for free on our websites. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's really, the, you know, we're in a new, new era of crowdsourcing, community sourcing, health and wellness. And we are integrating the, the, the new sciences with the ancient sciences. And I think that's important. We're not here to say modern science is wrong. We're here to say, well, hey, maybe, you know, these things, we can do something different. Because I, too, utilize modern science. Mm -hmm. I think it's really amazing, but our ancient nature that, that, again, what you're sharing is really critical and important. So, Hey, everyone. If you need a little extra help getting started on a carnivore diet and my online resources that I have for free aren't enough for you, you can go to www.howtocarnivore.com and sign up for our 30-day carnivore challenge where you'll have online resources, group support, weekly Zoom meetings, as well as the ability to chat live with myself, Simon Lewis, and the others in the challenge who can help you and support you and give you extra advice and help you along the way. So if that sounds like something that would be beneficial to you, then please go to howtocarnivore.com and sign up. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you there. Okay. So when, when would they, when would you add in uh, fasting in that context? Like, is it, is it to do with cycle or just you know, every now and then, or just intermittent fasting is enough, or do you need periods of time uh, to come off food entirely? Well, hyperemesis, which is mm -hmm. a condition where women have severe nausea and vomiting, typically in the first trimester, which is very common. A woman says, you know, suddenly food aversion. And mm -hmm. they're like, I'm, I'm, I must be pregnant or maybe I'm pregnant or they don't know. And so I think there's a, a there's a, a biological reason to say don't eat the food because it's it may be toxic for my baby that's trying to implant. So I believe the first trimester is one of the most important times to to um, to fast. 
and it may be the luteal phase. So the post ovulatory, so maybe the last quarter of the cycle may be a good time. Again, by fasting, you reduce your sugar levels and the plant toxins uh, that are in your body circulating because you're eating three to six meals a day. Mm -hmm. And so I say, and then the first trimester, I see patients who are like, I have terrible nausea and vomiting and they, they're eating crackers, which are, and they're eating six meals a day in order to get their metabolism moving or feed their baby, which, mm -hmm. which ultimately I think, uh, again, mannose, glucose, galactose, fucose, xylose, uh, N-acetylglucosamine, N-acetylgalactosamine are common sugars that can be damaging in excessive amounts. Uh, and that's why fasting is so important to get rid of the plants. And I tell women to have a butter, but even just a, you know a, a, a cold frozen butter, put in your, your mouth, let it melt, um, and you will get it uh, down mm. there. And that will provide what you, what you want, but not what you need. Um, and then uh, again, my bet is there are many times where we might be sick longer in pregnancy. And, 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 and since we're supposed to carry a certain amount of fat, 26 to 28% fat for women in order to be potentially the fittest, uh, mm -hmm. then you have plenty of fat to provide the fuel and the building blocks for your baby for you to survive uh, and deliver a healthy baby. Yeah. And so do you, do you find that there's a benefit to fasting on top of carnivore on top of you know, you're not, you're already not eating the plants. You're already not eating carbohydrates. You're already in that, uh, you know, non-insulin driven state. Uh, do you find that there's benefit on top of that to just not well, eating at all? Yes. Because one is it's kind of driving your car. You got the best cleanest fuel but you drive it it's still going to have damage so mm -hmm. the gi tract is the most sensitive organ system of our body the mucus layer so the, the more you eat the more you still damage the glycocalyx mm -hmm. of the bowels now now you're less damaged if you're strictly a carnivore but the problem is so many carnivores are high protein low fat mm -hmm. which is rabbit starvation and protein poisoning and amino proteins break down to amino acids, which are glucogenic and ketogenic. They must be converted to acetyl-CoA in the liver via insulin in order to make fat. But before they do that, you're still circulating sugar levels uh, 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 that and, and amino acid levels that may still have damage to the glycocalyx and they ferment. Amino acids and sugars both ferment. Mm. They feed the bacteria and yeast, which ferment, which in fermentation in the gut is not good for us. So I think that one meal a day is like my, my most sweet spot for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, this idea that you need to fuel your metabolism, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. I know if I, when I have my big meal at night, I'm tired, mm -hmm. which you're meant to be in order to rest and digest. I haven't really seen any proof proof that you should wait three hours or six hours before you sleep. It doesn't make any sense. Your bowels are over, always working. And when you're resting, you're now providing the blood flow to the bowels so you can take all the nutrients to the liver. Hepatic portal bloodstream goes right to the liver. Insulin from the pancreas, blood flow to the liver, which is critical in order to convert amino acids and sugars to fat. Remember, fatty acids come into the lymphatics through the thoracic duct because fat does not need to be converted to mm. fat because it already is the only fuel of your muscle and your brains, your reproductive system also. Nice. And, and I wanted to talk a little bit about hepatogenous diabetes. I don't know if you've you've mm. you've come across that at all. Let's do it. <laughs> hepatogenous diabetes. Have you heard of it? I don't know by no, I haven't heard that term before. I haven't. I had neither. Okay. Yeah. So there is a so 
96% of cirrhotic patients are insulin resistant and 30% are frank diabetics. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the liver's function is to convert amino acids and sugars to fat via insulin. So as, as, as the liver function drops, insulin resistance increases. Okay. So first it's fatty liver, then it's kind of fibrotic sclerotic liver, then it's cirrhotic liver. So all cirrhotics are skinny. They have no fat. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, just big bellies. They yeah, have ascites, ascites, yeah, but they have paper thin skin. They yeah, have no subcutaneous fat. Yeah, the reason is they can't make fat because mm. fat is made in the liver. So if you think about it, as as the the twenty four seven three sixty five exposure of the liver to amino acids and sugars and the plant toxins, it causes liver cellular damage, hepatocyte damage. So now the liver cells aren't as quick at converting sugars to fat. So your overall sugar level rises in the bloodstream. What else rises in the bloodstream? Your insulin. Mm -hmm. We call that insulin resistance, correct? Mm -hmm. So is it probable, I'm, I'm an anatomical guy, why does all the blood flow to the bowels go to the liver, including the pancreatic blood flow? Because the liver's job is to make fat first. Because let's just say we were omnivores, right? If we were omnivores, you sugars are not the fuel for the, the cells. Fat is because a type one diabetic, are they fat or skinny? Skinny. They're skinny. Why? They can't can't utilize uh, their fat or their uh, or can't make fat and they can't, can't make fat. Glucose. That yeah. that is it. Yeah. Why can't they make fat? They have no insulin. Why can't mm -hmm. the cirrhotic patient make fat? Because they have a dysfunctional liver. Mm -hmm. They have high insulin and high glucose levels. Yet they're skinny. Well, I thought glucose insulin's job was to put glucose in the cells. Mm -hmm. Well, how come it's not doing that? Because insulin resistance is hepatogenous diabetes. As the liver function drops, insulin levels rise because glucose levels rise because the liver can't make the fat. And again, it's the toxins in the plants. It's the direct sugars. Remember, plant sugars are foreign sugars. So like a blood transfusion, think about it. Our blood type is determined by a sugar coating the cell. If I give you the wrong blood type, you're going to have an inflammatory reaction, right? Mm -hmm. So if I give you plant sugars or bacterial or yeast sugars or viral sugars, you're going to have a reaction that's going to cause inflammation. Damage the organ systems, including the liver. Hepatitis C virus, right? It takes down the liver, right? It's a plant. It's a it's a sugar that causes inflammation. So hepatogenous diabetes is actually the cause of insulin resistance. Hmm. Okay. So I'll how send you far, Yeah. Yeah. Good. How far? Uh, how much? How far down that road do you have to go before you start getting insulin resistance? Is it just fatty liver disease or do you even need to get to fatty mm -hmm. liver stages? Don't know that answer, but I bet mm -hmm. it's before fatty liver disease. Okay. And, and, and since the liver's job is to make fat, I mean, you buy goose liver or duck liver, you cook it. It's just like all fat. Mm -hmm. So, so the liver's job is to make fat. And so maybe fatty liver isn't a disease unless we see other things going on with you, right? We wouldn't have any reason to check for it unless you've got a problem, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, again, the liver's job is to make fat, but we don't detect it until you have something else going on, sclerosis, fibrosis, before cirrhosis. But mm -hmm. I don't know that answer. 
Uh, okay. My bet is in utero, since in utero, the moms are eating excessive carbohydrates, which simply flow through the placenta to the fetus. They cause uh, hyper, they cause children to be born overweight, obese, mm. but the sugars are also circulating the liver, which is making fat yeah. in the fetus. Yeah, that was, that was the thing too. You know, that's, that's what, you know, you get um, gestational diabetes that's associated with higher birth weight and then mothers developing diabetes later on. I always thought that same thing. You're just, you're just feeding carbs and you're getting this sort of precocious growth. And I think that I, I always thought that that was a, a, a contributing factor to why we're having bigger birth weights and bigger sizes and, and more instrumentated uh, deliveries and, uh, you know, C-sections and things like that, because you know, we're, we're supposed to, you know, we're, we're designed to come out of our mother, you know, you just die. We're not, you know, we're not like a bulldog, like an English bulldog. We're just like freakishly bred these things to not be able to fit out of the birth canal, you know? And so, you know, it only happened sort of in the last sort of century. And I, I remember hearing people say, it's like, well, you know, our brains are just getting so much bigger. Uh, and so it's having trouble getting out of the birth canal. I'm like, um, hold on a second. Our, our brain size are, are down. We're 11% down from that before the agriculture revolution. We're not getting larger brain sizes. And, uh, and that doesn't happen in, in one century, you know, the, the genetic population or the, you know, in population genetics, anyone who studied that understands that you you cannot change the genetics of an entire population that quickly. It does. It just doesn't happen. And so something else is happening environmentally. Well, we're eating too much. Mm -hmm. Again, three to six meals a day is deadly. If you simply eat one meal a day, you're probably healthier. Uh, and 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 you're right. Um, the simplicity of the story is we're eating excessive plants and not enough animal fat, and we're eating too much and too frequently. And mm -hmm. some simple things you can do, even without changing your what you eat, uh, but just changing uh, the frequency and adding a lot more fat to the diet. Uh, but uh, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, prematurity, uh, uh, fetal and maternal mortality, morbidity, all of these things are secondary plant-based low animal fat diet because everything you eat as a mom is, is, is going through the placenta to the baby. You're, when you're breastfeeding, everything you eat uh, is going through to the baby. And mm -hmm. so you're before you want to get a baby, while you're pregnant, and when you're breastfeeding, and after that, carnivore is for babies. Once you you stop breastfeeding, you should go to the bone, from the mm -hmm. breast to the bone. Uh, meat from milk from the breast to, to meat from the bone is really important for all of us. Our our humanity relies on it. Then I bet you will actually feel like a man or a woman you will begin to recognize that reproduction and relationships are critical. Um, depression, suicide, criminality will be reduced by going to our perfect human diet or, or the eat like a human, which is your story, which is, is eat fatty meat. That's mm -hmm. it. Simple. Yeah. I think, I think there's a t-shirt in there somewhere, you know, carnivores for babies, you know, and then like you know, some sort of, we're uh, doing it. We're yeah, doing absolutely. it. Yeah. <laughs> Bre breast to bone. I like that. Uh, breast well, that's the breast to bone or, or milk to meat. Uh, yeah. Again, yeah, meat. and I think you've probably talked about this in, uh, or, or, or others. I know we talked about the many in Africa, they, they eat the, the blood and mm -hmm. the milk from their animals. Uh, yeah. They let the animals eat the, eat the grass. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we can convince people that honey and fruit is, is fine, but of any frequency or significant, it is not. And fruits and vegetables and honey can be contaminated with bacteria, yeast and viruses mm -hmm. that are some of the leading causes of disease in the globe. Right. And especially in pregnancy as well. I mean, those, those always they don't eat soft cheeses or unpasteurized dairy, you know, get, uh, you know, listeria and other sorts of things can be quite, you know, uh, uh, teratogenic to the, the fetus, I believe. They're, they're, they're abortive, abortificants, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they're teratogens, uh, yeah, okay. all of those things. And, and pesticides come from plants. Human mm -hmm. beings think we're responsible. The plants look at, look around the plants own the world. Yeah. We will, we are fertilizer for the plants is as simple as that. And their reproduction is like as important as ours. 
Yeah. And now we can learn to use them in ways. And, and if we're going to eat a plant, like do it in a way that minimize, you know, if you're going to eat some honey or fruit or vegetables or French fries, you know, minimize them. But the challenge is, is that I know of no one that's ever had an anaphylactic reaction to a ribeye steak, mm -hmm. but plants, my daughter would die to an avocado and a banana. The challenge yeah. is, you know, what my, my partner uh, used to eat crab. And then one day she had an anaphylactic reaction to crab. Mm. So these anaphylactic reactions can come upon us and we don't know when or why uh, yeah. shellfish uh, plants, fruits, fiber, vegetables, seeds, and nuts um, are all potentially antigenic enough that they can take us down fast. And it's the glycobiome that is the killer. Yeah. And I think I've always thought too, I wondered about that with, uh, with shellfish, you know, is it, is it something in their environment, you know, the algae and things like that, that they're eating, maybe those antigens get mixed in because you can certainly get those you know, like red tide and, you know, many other, other things that can get into the shellfish. They're just, you know, filter fish, they're filter animals. They sort of get this stuff in. And so, you know, maybe that can get in there and maybe, maybe that's what people are reacting to, but, um, the only, yeah. And the, the, argument that i see you know there's always there's always this you know just you know pulling at threads and 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 just you know uh, grasping at straws uh well they do when you point out the, the different allergies and anaphylactic reactions that people get it's to plants and then they'll say oh, oh you know people get you know anaphylactic reactions to meat as well and then they'll cite that you know people bit by the lone star tick and they have this you know cross reaction and things like that but that's not being that's not reacting to the meat there's nothing in the meat that you're reacting to that you have a problem with you get this you know some, this infection that's caused a disruption in your in your body in your physiology which is the point of of toxins and parasites and and bugs and and plants i mean it's, it's just absolutely just global warfare out there and so you know they're doing that and that disrupts your body and now you can't eat properly and from what i understand as well uh it's it's only certain meats so you can still eat meats you can still eat different meats and um and it's also it goes away in about three months so this is a temporary reaction and it's not it, it doesn't make you um uh, allergic to meat for the rest of your life uh, or to all meats well well the same thing goes with eggs and butter and mm. cream uh in the meats what is the animal eating yeah that may be uh, uh gaining again think about the lectins oxalates and phytates that embed in our body well they bet in the animal's body but if they're eating the proper diet that they're meant to eat yeah. uh but even uh, uh these animals are at risk of damage and disease from the natural foods that they eat depending on the season the invasive uh of uh, uh, uh plants but you're right the the bugs the bacteria yeast viruses and other bugs contain antigenic particles that can cause it i i have a place down in sarasota bay and you know quite commonly the red tide kills everything the mm. same thing can happen to us for sure and that's mm. why i think red of uh, 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 fatty meat of uh, uh, you know you get the the cow and you process parts of it like the steak ground meat has more of a risk of being contaminated because of the risk of bacteria mm. yeast and viruses contaminated in the processing so know your processor know your farmer uh, and some people can't tolerate certain meats and eggs and butter, but I think the the risk is is minuscule contained compared to the fact that the plants directly themselves have the antigens that are inflammatory to our body. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Changing direction slightly, uh, breastfeeding, Dr. Kiltz. A lot of people I know who've had babies recently have really struggled with breastfeeding. And I'm wondering if you've, you know, I suppose it, it's likely going to come back to nutrition, but if you've had any success helping or coaching people to, to get back to breastfeeding. Well, that's something real important. And we need to talk about a lot more. And it's interesting. I've heard a lot of women that are doing carnivore saying their breasts are getting bigger. They're depositing the fat in the glands more naturally because they've reduced the inflammation. So if you start off with healthier breast tissue, 
then when you're pregnant and then deliver, your breasts are going to function more naturally. But because we're eating a plant-based diet, breasts are dysfunctional. Breast cancer is in the rise in younger women all the mm -hmm. time. And you may have a genetic predisposition, but the genes are not the cause. And I know you've talked yeah. to Thomas Seyfried. Mm -hmm. It's our environment. The yeah. metabolic damage from a plant-based low animal fat diet, I think is it. So those that go carnivore definitely, I think, have a, a, a better capability, a better quality breastfeeding, better quality milk and and longevity on, on breastfeeding for sure. So when you're before, during and after pregnancy, you want to go carnivore, but you want to focus on the fatty meats, eggs, butter, cream, in my opinion. And then again, when you're breastfeeding, you'll improve things also. And, you know, you, listen, everyone's looking for the, the scientific study. Just start looking at the carnivore blogs and all the women, they're like, oh my God, this is happening to me. The, the N of one is the most important thing. And mm. we're storytellers. We're here to tell a story. And the story is what I've experienced, what you've experienced, and what my clients have experienced, which is my community. And breastfeeding is improved. And then those kids, once they're there, they, they want someone, someone showed me a picture of a baby gnawing on the bone. And I was at with at Ken Berry's and Nisha's uh, when I was in uh, Austin. Uh, and their little baby was all eating meat. Uh, and and that's where we're we're we need to be giving more direction. So we have healthier babies. I had dyslexia and, and migraines and bowel problems as a kid. I couldn't read. I was completely incorrigible. Uh, my mother had to put my brother and I on leashes because we were so crazy, and uh, she'd be arrested today. Um, and and so I believe will allow us all to function better at every level. Uh, looking at the the carnivore lifestyle yeah um you know uh, <laughs> that's uh that was the same thing carnivores for babies you know so just uh, carnivores for that. babies carnivores yeah. <laughs> for moms and dads and, We're all big and you know, brothers and sisters yeah. all of us yeah the um yeah that's the thing too you know i mean the, these genes existed bef before you know they're saying it's like well you know someone has you know the, you know the BRCA you know genes and things like that or or the HER2 genes all these sorts of different things um and and that and yes that that plays a role but those genes existed they didn't just show up this generation they didn't just all of a sudden just start popping up out of nowhere they were in the population they were in the gene pool it's just now something in our environment is now triggering those uh, faulty genes to now express differently and, um, and cause more and more problem. And so, you know, I think that that's very clear. There's something environmental that's influencing this because the genes are, are the genes they've been here for thousands of years or more. You're, you're right. And I see patients coming to me who have had breast cancer, their mom had breast cancer, or they got the BRCA gene. And, and I'm like, well, not everyone with BRCA gets cancer. And, mm -hmm. and, and then they're trying not to have a child with the BRCA gene. And which I personally think is misguided because we still think it's a genetic uh, cause and, mm -hmm. and not a, not an environmental or a yeah. nutritional cause as we're finding uh, it in, in, in this. So it, um, I think that you know, again, as a doctor and a doctor, you know, we weren't taught these things, uh, and but we're we're finding them and it's just such an eye opener. Uh, mm -hmm. We're reading actually this week's book, like you do. Uh, book club is is uh, is Thomas Seifried's book, uh, Cancer's Metabolic oh. Disorder, oh, and excellent. and that was one of the first books I read. I don't remember, you know, a long time ago when it first came out. I was like, I never knew this, uh, yeah. but that's when I learned about Otto Warburg and and mm -hmm. started reading his stuff. You know, one rabbit hole to another. Yeah. That's what this is about. But but I'm I'm just again uh, so thankful I've fallen into this world of 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 carnivore. But there's much more to it because you know if you're if if you're ketovore and you're fasting and you focus on fat, you may be just as good. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Well, at least you get improvements. Anyway, you're going in the right direction. You're eating yes. more, you're giving your body fat uh, that you need. These are the nutrients that you absolutely have to have. And you're eliminating out some of the worst offenders. Absolutely.
keto is the on-ramp to carnivore it's the yeah, entryway 100%. it's the key to the the master class i say that's it yeah yeah you got the foot in the door and now it's just yeah, kind of, yeah. that's and, i mean all of us i mean you know, i i was i was first in the paleo world and then mm -hmm. i ran into keto world and then i was like some guy like you was like like this and he said i eat meat I don't eat anything else and I don't exercise. And I was like, that one looks like for me. Now yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, but he wasn't sharing everything. <laughs> yeah. And well, yeah, that was the thing. I think I'm 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 one of the the few people that just went just there's this whole hog. He's like, nope, plants yeah. are gonna kill me. Like I have no interest in these things. And just like just dump them all and it, and just kept got the whole got the whole bag in one go, which is very, very lucky. I'm very fortunate for that. Yeah. Well, and we, you know, again, when I read uh, The World Turns Upside Down by mm. by um, uh, Richard Feynman, he mm. said that carbohydrates are never required in the diet. And I'm like, I never knew that, right? Mm. So plants are never required in our diet. Glucose is not the energy for our cell. The liver's function is to make fat, not to de detoxify. Because you and I don't know a disease that it doesn't detoxify, do we? Mm. Yeah. alcoholism yeah i mean we were meant alcohol is a natural product that we're supposed to drink in amount that heavy amount so but, yeah um, yeah right yeah no kidding yeah well cool well dr yeah, Kerry, it's, good. yeah well it's been it's been an absolute pleasure i know you have to uh head off you're just starting your day uh thank you so much for taking the time uh to speak with us it's, it's you know it's great it's, um great to see you as always i'm sorry i wasn't able to make it to to ketocon this year it would have been great to hang out with everyone again you're going to be in london or in england next month Definitely. yeah yeah i may go oh. uh t and i are maybe talking about going to london and maybe turkey uh we, next yeah well, yep. what are you doing when when are you going to turkey well we may go that the week Mm -hmm. of that the conference because i've happened to have a week off which mm. uh i got a couple other conferences to do and then i've got that week so we're kind of toying with it and uh because i i know yeah. you and and sean are there and mm -hmm. olivia's there and i just uh, i met uh rena i don't know if you've met rena alavalia yet well i i mean on online i haven't met her in person right yet, yeah but i met her in person at uh at uh a uh, keto con and oh, cool. i i met her i met her partner uh asia yeah. uh i did a quick uh, zoom with her this morning and uh just you know that's the beauty we're meeting people around the globe mm -hmm. i've got to come to australia you should yeah. come down under well, yeah you've always got a place to stay uh absolutely and um but it, you know it's funny you said turkey because Elle and i actually have a wedding in turkey the next week so we're, we'll be staying around and going there as well. We were thinking of going. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, we were thinking of you know seeing some other stuff first, but yeah, then like one week after the conference, we're going to be in Turkey for a wedding. So that's that's funny that uh, that you're going to be over well, there. I may be the week before, but I was thinking about yeah. coming to uh, Chesterfield. Is that where it is? Where's Sheffield. the conference? Sheffield, Sheffield. just outside of um, London. Three hours. Oh, it's uh, but yes, but uh, Manchester. It's just I I think you fly okay. into Manchester and then it's like, you know, half an hour out of that or something like that. Okay, all right. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm playing with it. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah, we well, should. Well, let me know definitely if you do, and uh, we'll get some steaks. Uh, I look forward to. It. I look forward. To it. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Yeah, I got to get moving. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, no Doctor Kills. Sorry, hope we didn't you. Right, we'll talk again soon. I love you guys. Bye bye. Right, thanks so much. For for those of us, uh, those of the people in the audience that don't know your work, can you tell us a bit about yourself and, and what you do? Well, I'm a fertility specialist at CNY Fertility in uh, the United States and globally, really. Um, I've been doing uh, women's health care reproduction for 30 years. Prior to that, uh, I, I studied as an OBGYN doc, uh, a reproductive endocrinologist, which is specializing in IVF and other reproductive issues. Uh, miscarriages, failed pregnancy, um, other genetic disorders. And uh, that's kind of been my focus. But I talk a lot about uh, carnivore and keto and health and wellness and mindfulness. So that's kind of like my focus in life is healing both on the natural side and also the medical side mm -hmm. uh, and integrating again, some, some uh, complementary medicine and spirituality at the same time. Yeah, nice. And, and so you talk about obviously the diet side of things and carnivore. And I understand you're practicing carnivore as well. 
Uh, what, how did you come across this? Like, this isn't uh, obviously something that's all that widespread. And you've been there for a while. So, you know, how did you, how did you come about it? Well, about 20 years, I kind of started getting into the integrative medical side in my practice, integrating uh, uh, yoga, meditation, spirituality, and things like that. And um, some of my patients were getting pregnant on something called paleo. And I'm like, what is paleo diet? Because, you know, we were generally trained that diet doesn't matter and it doesn't matter what you're doing. And I used to think celiac disease was kind of made up in things. And um, as I began to read about paleo diet and uh, uh, let's see, and then, then I kind of found this thing called keto diet. And um, I, you know, I was, I was always into exercise and fitness and um, I did Weight Watchers for a while, Atkins and did all those things, uh, working to stay healthy. And yet I had bleeding in my bowels, arthritis, psoriasis, migraines, kidney stones. And, and so as I, I, I don't know, remember who I came across, but I was watching another one of those, either a uh, uh, diet doctor or a uh, 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 low carb, high fat uh, 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 experts. And I saw this, this, this guy about my age, I'm 66 now. So it was about 15, 10 to 15 years ago, he was fit. And he said, I eat only meat and I don't exercise. And I said, that sounds like something for me. <laughs> so I did it personally and one month. So keto made me feel better, but it wasn't until I did carnivore did my bowel bleeding, hemorrhoids, kidney stones, migraines, eczema, psoriasis, gone. And so I figured if it's working for me and my patients getting me on paleo, that's when I started talking about paleo and keto. But carnivore is one of those things that is just off-putting. So, you know, I was like, oh, I, I can, I can, I'll give everyone this, but, you know, I don't want to scare them away. But um, now I'm, I talk about carnivore as like the top of the line mm -hmm. and I still intersperse keto and paleo for those that just kind of aren't quite ready for the carnivore craziness. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, it's, it's totally understandable. I mean, people didn't even know what, what carnivore was a few years ago. Now, at least it's a, it's a term that people bandy around. Whereas like when I, when I first moved to Australia, people had no idea what the hell I was doing. You know, I would say, you know, I only eat meat and they, they literally look at me like I had three heads. I had to explain myself basically almost, almost violently uh, like two, three times a day. Be like, you do what exactly? It, yeah. And, and I mean, I, I am not a hundred percent all the time uh, because at 66, I mean, I'm, I've been feeling great for over 10 years and occasionally with my friends or family, I might have some French fries I might do, uh, I'd make an ice cream, uh, but you add no sugar to it and it's still good. Yeah. And um, I occasionally sip wine or a martini, but that's sips and it's rare. If you've got a problem and you want to heal it, it's carnivore is this is the top notch. And I also believe that fasting and one meal a day is like the critical component to this. Okay. So, so you, you incorporate fasting along with carnivore as well? I do one meal a day at night. Yeah. I personally think that is the very best thing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can do more than a day, all power to you. But, mm -hmm. you know, as a human being, it's, you know, we're daily routine, I think is really critical in life. But I think fasting, if you can't do carnivore or keto, but you can fast on a regular basis, it'll help you tremendously for sure. Yeah, no, no, I, I totally agree with that. Yeah, like it's, um, you know, there's, there's tons of, of uh, evidence for that. And what I find interesting is a lot of these studies show similar efficacy with fasting and a, and a fasting mimicking diet, which is, you know, essentially just keto. And um, do you find that there's, there's an added benefit on carnivore to fasting as well? Yes, because I, I, I've, um, see, some of our theories of medicine are completely wrong in health and wellness. So the, the bowels, are a digesting uh, bucket that you want. Fasting means you have an empty bowels. Well, no one has an empty bowels unless they go on significant fasts. Mm. And so by eating only one time a day, uh, you're, you're more likely to, to maximize the empty bowel syndrome, okay. which ultimately you want an empty bowel. 
because as long as the bowels are full of mostly carbohydrates, you're always secreting sugar and the other plant products into the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All the blood from the bowels goes to the liver. Mm-hmm. So as long as you have sugar, again, a complex carbohydrate plant-based diet always secretes sugar into the bowels mm-hmm. or into the bloodstream. Yeah. All the blood goes to the liver and the liver does what it's meant to do with sugar and amino acids, which is make fat. Mm-hmm. And so glycation is the leading cause of all disease. Yeah. That means our bodies, our bloodstream has excess sugar for a tremendous long time, basically the day you're born to the day you die. Mm-hmm. And so I actually believe insulin is not the culprit in any of this. Mm-hmm. It's only sugar along with the other plant phytochemicals, poisons, the antigens, and then the fermentation of the carbs in the bowels due to a, an in, to a, the microbiome, mm-hmm. uh, which is fermenting and, and killing us essentially. So if you can fast, even though you like to eat carbs, mm-hmm. if you could go on a, a two to three day fast, but yeah. no one can do that out of any real regularity. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that you want to get rid of the antigens and the fermentation. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so how do you, how have you incorporated this in with your patients? Or, you well, know? well, well I, I, I started off because I write a lot. Mm-hmm. And, and if I don't write something that I can understand and they can understand, but I, I kind of write, downloadable, easy to read and understand about keto, which it really incorporates keto carnivore. Our our next version has carnivore as sort of like, this is it. I mean, it's in here, but you know, keto is that buzzword. So if I, I give them these things, the family building guide for fertility and my keto is really for fertility. Uh, You can buy these on Amazon or download them for free from my websites, but uh, you know, I, I talk about it incessantly mm-hmm. because of, you know, so much of medicine is out of control cost wise, you know, in America, it's out of control. Mm-hmm. And so um, I speak about it, I write about it, and I do my blogs about it. Um, and I offer literature. Uh, and then I share your website and mm-hmm. all the others that are in this keto carnivore space. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I think is really, really radical. Nice. Yeah. And then, um, and how are you seeing this, you know, be affected in, in, in just the fer- fertility world? Like, how is this helping uh, your patients? Well, there are so many people on our Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook that are sharing their stories that, you know, either keto and carnivore really reduced their inflammation and or suddenly they delivered a baby naturally and didn't miscarry. So, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a big data. Uh, data to me sometimes can be uh, uh, distracting. Mm-hmm. Uh, lies, damn lies in statistics and science. You know, really what I've found is like you, you're telling your story. Um, and so many other experts are telling their personal story. And, and we're sharing those personal stories. And I've just time and time and time again, all of their diseases go away. Yeah. But in our case, fertility, which is the foundation of life is reproduction. Yeah. You know, people tell me, oh, I'm healthy, but I just can't get pregnant or stay pregnant. Well, yeah. if you're not getting pregnant or staying pregnant, you're not healthy. Mm-hmm. And health and wellness is in the success of the human body in what it's here to do, which is to create and reproduce. Yeah. And PCOS and metabolic disorder, endometriosis, adenomyosis, and fibroids uh, are are so common. Pelvic pain. You know, PCOS starts in the early years now, you know, 13, 12, 11. I think the damage happens in utero Mm. uh, because, you know, we're all eating a standard diet, which is getting through the placenta, damaging the reproductive organs at a very early age. But it's all about stories. The more people yeah. tell the story, you know, that's where I'm seeing the big change in this in this field. You know, it, it, the more we the more we complain and blame about others, 
the, the, the least we're going to have of, of really making uh, a change here. But now it's about we're all sharing the stories. It's crowd and community sourced healthcare. That's what we need in the fertility world and, and the neurologic and cardiovascular and, you know, infinite areas. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like um, you, you see some people detracting from these things, you know, people saying like, well, I, I've reversed this, I've done this, I've done these sorts of things. People get mad. It's like, well, that's just anecdotal. And it's like, okay, so I guess it didn't happen then. You know, I guess this person didn't actually reverse their Crohn's and get pregnant. And um, you know, what I think of that is more of that's, that's actually running the experiment. You can have all the studies, you can have all the, 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 the literature, but are you, when you run a real world experiment, when you try this with your own life, does it work or not? And, you know, as, as Richard Feynman, a uh, physicist said, it doesn't matter how brilliant your theory is. And it doesn't matter how smart you are. If it doesn't agree with experiment, it's wrong. And so, you know, people can tell me all day that, oh yeah, well, you're, you're going to die. You're going to do this. And yet, and yet, and yet, and yet I'm not. And, and so, you know, it's wrong. I, I, uh, I think, you know, it was William Davis, David Perlmutter. It was, uh, it was Gary Tobbs. Mm. That was sort of like the book that changed. I kept on reading it and listening it. And there was another gal, the uh, uh, world turned upside down by by Richard Feynman, mm. um, and and so many uh, uh, books out there. But I recently found a book by Doctor Salisbury. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Salisbury, Salisbury steak. Yeah. Like in the eighteen hundreds, the guy figured out yeah. that all of his men were dying of dysentery due to plants. Yeah. He fed them steak and coffee, and they all got better. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I think with, with, you know, I started doing uh, videos about 20 years ago mm. and I was kind of mostly focusing on meditation and prayer and positive intentions. Uh, uh, Rhonda Byrne, I think from Australia, uh, the, I don't know if you've ever read the secret and understand the concepts of the mind and all of this, mm. but I focused on that. And then as I, as I learned more, but this is now, the source for medical health and wellness. Yeah. Uh, and the, the patients are, we're following, everyone's following everyone. And mm -hmm. the more we can share what you did to get to the health and wellness, and all of us are, are responsible for our own health care. No one, no, no doctor can really be responsible for my health care. I am. And yeah. so I think that you know, we're finding someone that that we're learning from. And as I went, you know, Weight Watchers, Atkins, Paleo, Keto, Carnivore, you know, I, I had to personally experiment with those things, even though, you know, this stuff has been around by Salisbury and yeah. you know, it goes banting and way before that, you know, our ancient, our ancient heritage as tribal hunters, yeah. is really, really what you are. But, you know, I still, we all still, you still get, you know, comments like, what? what? Come yeah. on. Yeah. Where's the paper? Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. I'm like, if you wait for the paper that's going to solve your medical problem today, you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, um, that was what someone said. Um, I'm sure you, you're familiar with uh, Atul Gawande who wrote like complications and better and things like that. And one of the, one of the lines in better, he um, was talking to this guy who, who dealt with cystic fibrosis and he had the best numbers out of, out of everyone. And he was, you know, he did things in a very particular way and he did things differently than, than the, you know, the normal guidelines. And Gawande asked him about this and he just sort of laughed and said, you know, if you, if you practice evidence-based medicine, you're always going to be two years behind the curve. And or uh, more, or, or more. more. Or yeah. More. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's, Evidence-based medicine is just a, a model that we've been sold as doctors. And so we've missed so much that's available in, in, in health and wellness. And again, it's the scientific studies are all funded by a mission. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, it's the funding a carnivore diet. Well, you know, diets are hard to, to come by. Uh, anyway, because, you know, it's like, what did you eat last week? I'm telling you, I ask everyone, what'd you eat? I ate healthy. Well, I ate clean. I, I like, I no, no, no. What did you eat? Well, I, I ate, um, I ate uh, meat or, or, or vegetables. And, but no, no. What did you eat? Exactly. That's hard for all of us. I, I can only remember what I eat 
for the last five, 10 years because I eat the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it, it's, it is um, the science of getting your papers published. It must meet the mission of the publishers. Yeah. Unfortunately. And so, you know, people ask me to participate in science and research. I'm saying, listen, I already know what the answer is. You don't have to believe me. Don't do it if you don't want. But we're meant to eat fatty meat yeah. probably once a week because food was hard to come by. Drink water and breathe air. And we likely didn't run on a treadmill and go for a walk in nature because you were going to be taken down by the wild beast quite readily. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, why did we eat plants or figure it out? Well, I mean, basically, if you couldn't kill the wildebeest and you were like starving, you were going to eat a mushroom or you're going to eat a fruit and a vegetable. And God bless you. If you survived it, you know, you were able to maybe reproduce. Mm -hmm. But plants are the cause of all disease in humanity, unfortunately. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. I think that, you know, and, and Salisbury, you know, already nailed it, you know, in the 1800s, you know, which I think is amazing. And, uh, you know, that, that's like sort of what I'm trying to write now, basically, is just arguing that that the so called chronic diseases that we face nowadays are not diseases per se, but toxicities, toxic buildup of species inappropriate diet and a lack of species specific nutrition, you know, in plain terms, too many plants, not enough meat. And, you know, and this can, you know, obviously there are genetic issues and there's trauma and, and childbirth and delivery and there's problems that come. And, and that was the mainstay of, of medicine for thousands of years. And now it's chronic disease management. And it's- Well, know, I, I went to medical school at UC Davis. Um, uh, I did not get into my OBGYN residency. Um, so I took a year of internal medicine mm -hmm. and I really loved it and I was gonna stay it. But then I realized, you know what? This is like, all I'm doing is writing a prescription. Mm -hmm. for I, and I have no idea so my sister died of diabetes at age 52 and one of my best friends from medical school Dave died of lymphoma at 52 mm -hmm. those two events about 15 years ago 10 to 15 years ago said okay now wait a minute why did these healthy people why did Dave die healthy yeah. uh, and uh, why did my di my sister die of diabetes since age four and her diet was plant-based and take insulin and um, I, I don't remember who said it. It might have been Sarah Holberg, who just passed of cancer, by the way. Wow. Um, and and um, she she is a, a Verta, Verta Health with Peter Atia. <laughs> but but I it was the same reason my friend Dave died and my sister died is because plants are poisonous, yeah. and vegetables, fruit, fiber, seeds, and nuts cause cancer. Three meals a day of that same stuff is the deadliest thing we do, but it is so radical. I'm Italian. My family, I mean, we, I, I'm, a, you know, I'm a foodie. We love food. I mean, of course we do. If you don't love food, you're dead. Mm -hmm. so, so, but ultimately our DNA is amazing. Our diseases are not due to dysfunctional DNA or genetics, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have cystic fibrosis genetically predisposed people that don't have CF. Yeah. Wow. Huntington's and I'll go down the list of every genetic oh, disorder. Really? Even Huntington's. It's, even Huntington's. Wow. It's an environment due to eating a deadly diet because remember when inflammation damages your DNA, mm -hmm. it damages, it damages. And I don't know if you've ever heard of, the glycobiome and glycobiology. Hmm. No, I haven't seen that book. Yeah. So, so this is just one of these things. Now, the glycobiome is the mucopolysaccharide layer that protects every epithelial lining of your body. Yeah. It's a sugar layer, mucin, negatively charged sulfates. It's sugar. When you eat a lot of sugar, what happens to a sugar layer? It dissolves it. Yeah. Like dissolves like. So our thousands of years of eating a plant-based diet, now it's like plant-based diet is like heaven. Mm -hmm. It destroys the glycobiome, which now allows the microbiome to attack you. Right. One plus glycation. So glycation ultimately damages what part of your body? 
Well, when he gets in, yeah. Well, I mean, your your, your blood and your um, well, blood and every blood. Yeah, single everything. particle of your body is damaged by glucose. Now, yeah. do you know that glucose? Here's the interesting part: glucose is just another glycan, and glucose is not the energy of the mitochondria. Mm-hmm. Acetyl CoA is. Yeah. So here, because again, everyone says that glucose is energy for the mitochondria and keto is the conversion of burning sugar to burning fat. Mm -hmm. I will bet you that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And the reason you know that is because number one is, do you know anyone who has no fat in their bloodstream? No. How about has no fat in their cells? No, absolutely not. So why would the body burn sugar when acetyl-CoA from fatty acids is there fast as you know. Yeah. Can you explain it? Yeah. 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 Okay, so anorexia nervosa, are they at risk of dying quickly and suddenly? Yep, Hmm. big time. Because they do not have what? Yeah, no fat. Fat. Yeah. So now what's the purpose of glucose in the bloodstream? That's the question. Hmm. Glycosylation. Okay. So again, you and I know nothing about this, Mm -hmm. but I can tell you this is the game changer. See, everyone's focused on the microbiome. Microbiome is bullshit. Sorry. The microbiome sells people to take bacteria and yeast. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like spread it all over your skin and all over your eyes. Would you recommend that to anyone? No. So the bowels are like the most sensitive protective layer of your body mm-hmm. but but what what actual layer is protecting us the yeah. mucopolysaccharide glycobiome which is negatively sulfated and heparinized to protect you from the microbes mm. so when that layer gets damaged so think of it as as a lipid layer with proteins and glycans spreading all all over it, which are the finger projections to tell you your HLA, your DNA, your immune system, your adhesion systems, even sperm and eggs and embryos and endometrium contains the glycobiome, which is critical for the sperm and egg interactions. Okay. So the bowels, I mean, as a kid, I had bowel problems and migraines. Couldn't figure it out. I was dyslexia, dyslectic, ADHD, no CD, which you could probably understand. Mm. But I didn't understand why, again, until I was 55. I discovered all this at 50, really went hardcore carnivore at 55. Mm. All of it gone. And so you and I think insulin resistance is a real thing, don't you? Mm. It's not. Yeah. Okay. It's impossible. Insulin resistance is what is the seller to sell you more drugs and insulin, like the cholesterol drugs, because you and I know cholesterol. Listen, my family is high cholesterol. They lived in 90 and over 100, mm-hmm. right? And I have high cholesterol, but I will tell you that insulin doesn't cause disease Mm -hmm. but insulin actually is the most valuable hormone of your body okay what does it help you become fat yeah and if you're not fat and there's a famine or you're you get Mm -hmm. pregnant in a famine you're dead yeah and so the idea so glucose is the poison Mm -hmm. now if i inject the bolus of glucose in someone 10 times the amount of glucose that they need, what will happen to them? Yeah. They will become in a coma, Hmm. but their heart will not stop beating. But my theory is glucose as another glycan, like many other glycans is critical for the neurotransmitters. Remember Hmm. neurotransmitters are glycosylated proteins and they are created so fast yeah without that happening that we we cannot exist so 
all the chronic diseases, ALS, MS, uh, uh, even Huntington's, mm -hmm. is a neurodegenerative disorder due to constant damage from glucose and other glycans mm -hmm. in excess of amounts in our body, which aren't supposed to be there. Okay. Yeah, interesting. It's, not, it's, it's a yeah. hard one. This took me a while to figure out because mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out, well, if you look at the metabolic, the metabolic pathways, mm -hmm. sugar goes to fat in the liver mm -hmm. and amino acids go to all the precursors that essentially make fat. But remember, amino acids and simple sugars go into the hepatic portal system that go directly to the liver. Mm -hmm. When you eat fat, where does it go? Oh, it's just through, through your lymphatics. That's it. Yeah. So why would it go to the lymphatics, but amino acids and sugars must go to the liver? Yeah, because they need to be because yeah. because they need to be processed. Yeah. The liver is the only organ in the body that responds to insulin and yeah. makes fat. Hmm. Because liver failure patients are all diabetic. They have high insulin and they have high glucose levels, but they are emaciated. They have paper thin skin and no fat on them. Yeah. So my theory is, and, and I'm, you know, I'm talking in theory, but I'll bet a billion dollars on this. The liver's number one function is to make fat. Mm -hmm. And it does really well at that. But you cannot name a disorder where the liver doesn't detoxify of any significance. Mm -hmm. Can you? No. I mean, everyone says the liver detoxifies, correct? Yeah. What does it detoxify? Yeah. Alcohol? Tylenol? Well, mm -hmm. those are all modern made constructs. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how much alcohol we made 50,000, 100,000 years ago. Yeah. Did we? I don't think so. I, th I think like oldest records go back like 6,000 years, uh, you know, a beer like 6,000 years ago or something like that. I don't, I don't know of any, anything further than that. The, the colon cancer, um, colon diseases, uh, all, all gastrointestinal diseases, lung cancer, brain cancers are all on the rise in people. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm 66, but in, the, in my daughter's age in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. And I, as a fertility specialist, I see many young people working to preserve their fertility or they've already gone through cancer therapy. And I talked to an oncologist two days ago uh, and, and these concepts we're talking about are foreign mm -hmm. and so foreign. And, and again, when, when um, people don't know that vegetables ferment in our GI tract mm -hmm. and what do they ferment from? Bacteria and yeast. Yeah. And so when you eat bacteria and yeast, cause they tell you to, but the plants come with the bacteria and yeast that ferments, makes alcohol, aldehydes, heat, gas, and methane. There's no wonder that all of us are suffering in a very, very, very young age. Mm -hmm. And too many people are suffering. And to me, the answer is, is carnivore one meal a day. But when we say carnivore, it's not lean meat, mm. it's fatty meat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was trying to try to emphasize that with people as well because they, most people think that you know just eating more fat than they they usually eat that's eating a, a lot a lot of fat or enough fat uh, and you know generally they're they're having you know clear um, you know issues that say you need you need more fat no no, no I'm definitely eating enough fat and it's like well no if you were then you wouldn't be having this problem and uh, but yeah but the, people don't realize just how much fat that you need to eat they you know because we're just people just drilled in that just any any amount of fat is bad i mean so see we i tell people no matter their size they're beautiful and perfect yeah. if you're fat and there's a famine you survive if you're skinny in a famine you die mm -hmm. the genetics that actually get us fat are actually the best genes ever created by the human mm -hmm. line all right now again it's it's counter. Oh, you've got to lose weight. I never tell a patient to lose weight ever hmm. because see, everyone thinks that the fat is the cause of inflammation. Yeah. 
It's not. Yeah. When you fill when you fill the bowels with carbohydrates, remember you're you're fueling the digester to ferment. If you look at the farms around the world, they have these digesters. They they throw all the waste in it and water, and they they come with the bacteria and yeast that make heat, gas, methane, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 the idea is that we're just not open to. So if you're fat and you go carnivore keto one meal a day in one week, I'll bet you a billion dollars you feel amazing. Yeah. In a month, it's a game changer. Yeah. But the moment you see the three meals a day, especially if it's a high protein, low fat diet, mm -hmm. remember protein must be converted to fat in the liver via insulin. It, it, you know, Occam's razor is the simple answer is the one, you know, I, I you know, mTOR and all these ideas of ages. And, you know, again, we're, we're creating a story that for most of us idiots like me, that I, 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 I didn't understand even as a doctor. Right. And I read these papers and I'd like simplicity, please. <laughs> Uh, and and if you haven't, I mean, there's so many blogs of people doing this. It's simple. I eat steak and eggs and butter and cream, and I don't eat vegetables, fruit or fiber anymore. And I feel like a billion bucks. And and so the cause of disease is really simple. Yeah, we don't eat fatty meat anymore. Because yeah. you and I have been convinced is the cause of disease. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I hate to be the bearer. I mean, I take care of many vegans and vegetarians and Mediterraneans. And if you can see vegetarians are easy, cream, butter, eggs, cheese, one meal a day. That's the way. Now as a vegan coconut, I mean, coconut fat, coconut oil, because Fats from an animal, oils from a plant. Let's not, con con you know, be confused here. Mm -hmm. That if we could use some terminology, mm -hmm. but plants make phytochemicals that are in the oils to benefit the plant. Yeah, and and it's there in some way to see. I see plants are actually the predators of the universe, and we're just the prey. Yeah. <laughs> We smoke them, we drink them, we inject them. And listen, here's what I say. The masters, the masters eat the, the, the Wagyu A5 and the meek eat the mush. And the masses are convinced to eat the mush while the masters eat the A5 Wagyu steak. And they tell us, oh, an imp um, imp impossibility of eating a, a plant-based burger. And there's only one reason we want to eat a plant-based burger because it's a burger and yeah, your yeah. brain <laughs> wants a burger and yet you know now we're making man-made food out of dna or whatever the particles are in the lab i mean is that really where we want to go yeah. in this world you know yeah i hope not you know i i, I mean <laughs> but that's really up to those who recognize that we have to do you know uh 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 uh, agriculture and grazing in a way that is truly sustainable. I mean, everyone's blaming the cows for like global warming. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Last I looked, I think human beings are the blame yeah. <laughs> and, and not the cows. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, just, you know, animals are part of the environment. It is a symbiosis, you know? And so, you know, when we, when we first came to, well, when Europeans first came to America, you know, there was hundreds of millions of Buffalo running around a bunch of antelope and deer. So, you know, there were actually more animals you know, and more cows in, in the U S than, than there were before. And in the great plains were some of the most fertile land in the world. The grass was nine feet tall. And that's because the animals were replenishing these nutrients and, you know, and these things evolved with the grasslands, the plants evolved with the animals. And when you start screwing with these complex systems, you get, you get complex uh, uh, problems as a result of that. You know, I think we've done a darn uh, 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 amount of damage to this beautiful world. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it's not going to be, be healed overnight, but the, the yeah. global heal, it does all the time. 
And, you know, whether we're here or not, you know, it's just, it's going to do what it does. Yeah. And, and uh, I think it is important for us to continue the conversation of how we get back to a true uh, proper human diet, as Ken Berry likes to say. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, I, I, the word diet is so deadly to me. You know, we are really, what's our nutritional solution for a human being? You know, I say what, whether it's 3 million or 2 million, how many millions of years you and I came out of the trees, maybe, but we didn't get down on all fours to eat the grass. We ate the grass eaters and you yeah. and I were hunting, I don't know, 10, 50, a hundred thousand years ago. And we're not looking from the top of the mountain and saying, Hey, let's go eat the grass with the cows. We're going to go hunt the, the big beast. And that was really the pride of what we did. But, uh, you know, exactly what happened in the world to take us to where we're at, it's all a great story. But whether we're plant eaters or animal eaters or a mixture, uh, but if you're sick, carnivore, one meal a day is the kick-ass way. You know, change your practice. And you know, based on that, I don't know, what are some hard facts? Well, hard facts are that, you know, in, in botany and, and uh, in horticulture, we know that there are certain poisons in there that that plant makes to deter insects and animals from eating them you know especially in the bean right because a bean is a seed right all organisms protect their babies more than anything by and large and a seed is a plant's baby 